This program is rated MA. It contains adult themes, coarse language, sexual references and violence. What's up, everybody? It's Opa Comps. It's Friday, and we're back. Uh, I'm Drayden. We got Dirk here. Rain is here, and Brisk is here. How's it going? What's going on, guys? Howdy from uh, sunny Florida. Oh yeah, yeah. You're uh, you're not at home. Um, I am not. He's not. It's, uh, <laughs> Everyone's this is, it's this already is resort started. Brisk. Yeah, every, it's already starting. People are like, what happened to Brisk? <laughs> casual Brisk. What's he doing? Why is he? He's, he's casual. No, I'm I'm working. Right. So when I'm working, I take the tie off. All right. Uh, well, I might have a fix for you. Let's see. Oh, okay. I like how you do a suit and tie, or you're indoors wearing a hat. There you go. I like that. That's pretty right, good. Yeah, nice. That's perfect. <laughs> right? I mean, like. <laughs> I didn't have time to crop a well, but anyway. Yes, Brit, Brisk is off on uh, on real world uh, business. I'm really I'm really surprised, Brisk, that you're not out at some sort of like you know party getting sloshed event tonight. We did that already, so I I, I had time to come up and hang out with you guys instead. <laughs> they they did an old white men uh, old white men afternoon uh, afternoon sloshed event. You'd actually be surprised. We had a very good mixed crew of of people of both genders. Um, and various age ranges, so it was good. We had a good time. There you go. There you go. Uh, well, as everybody knows, we are pretty much. Oh, hold on. Actually, I'm looking at it. What the hell is? Oh, what the hell is that clock going to? Any, uh, anyways, uh, oh, I weeks. have it on the seventeenth. Hold on. No, never mind. Oh, anyway, just leave it there. We are two weeks from the start of uh, from the start of E Vegas. Actually, this time two weeks from now, we will already be underway as far as the keynotes and all that kind of stuff goes and whatever the friday night event that we still don't know about um happens so that's that and we are one week away from the pearl apocalypse uh the sale gets uh gets finalized i guess one week from today of uh ccp games to pearl abyss so we got all that coming at us do you think uh, pearl abyss is going to show up at vegas I would think so. You think they will? I yes. think that would be cool if they did. That would be cool. Could be. I mean, see, like, I, I just don't know if they're going to be like as involved as people think they are. I think they're going to be not... more like on a managerial level, like well, even above manager, just like a they they own it as a sister company. But I don't know if they're going to be like really getting hands on with the uh, CCP as much as people think. I. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they don't, but I think, hey, you know, you're you got an opportunity to come talk to a bunch of nerds and play video games. Why would you not try to sell your other product? Well, and you know? consider, you know, considering that they were at FanFest, which I understand was during, you know, was probably doing during part of the due diligence, uh, you know, process. Wait, wait, Pearl Abyss was at FanFest? Yes. Um, I don't remember that at all. I didn't know that. Yep. Um, so, so, you know, I, I, I would think, I would think that since this is the next big event, which is really the biggest of the events, um, I would think that this is in a, a great opportunity, um, you know, for Hilmar and the new one a week after the transaction closes to have them on, you know, to have somebody from the organization there on stage. Uh, wh whether or not they stick around, whether or not they talk with players of the game, um, you know, or anything like that, I think that that you know that this is an optimal opportunity for them. So I, part of me, part of me would hope that they were there. They're, you know, they're the new, they're the if new. If they showed up to Fanfest, yeah. If they went to Fanfest, I would assume they'll send someone to Vegas. But um, Bardgost, Bardgost well, was saying that the CEO was there being sneaky around the place, not in a public. Yeah. Manner, so no, no, no. Yeah, no. He wasn't oh, walking man. around going, "Hey, I'm looking to buy this company." But again, the 
they were th they were there, okay, as what I would probably think was part of the due diligence of, of, of buying the company, right? Because one of the one of the things that we saw a lot of during the uh, you know kind of during the coverage you know of it was them making comments about CCP's kind of community engagement, including things like fan fest and and and, and that sort of a thing. Um, so. That's probably why they were there. This is CCP. They're probably getting game. ideas too. I mean, have they has BDO done any stuff like that? I don't think so. I don't They're know. They're probably getting ideas. But you know, I think it, you know, I think it'll be cool. Uh, I think it'll be cool if they are. Uh, you know, if not, whatever. Yeah. You know. um, but anyways, yeah. So that's a week from that's a week from today. So we'll know. We'll know a week from right now if. Like when they when they actually like sign the sign the dotted line and whatnot. If all of a sudden like you know something happens and even like a pop up comes in and goes, if you'd like to be logged in for another twenty minutes, please deposit three dollars and seventy nine cents. Made outfits, <laughs> made skins, please. As long as uh, as Jinten gets his uh, his cat ears, he'll be happy. Yeah. But yeah, so a week from a uh, week from today. Um, last week, uh, Rain. Just want to recap because uh, uh, obviously you weren't here last week. You're over at the you know your Evathon mistress, or I don't know, whatever. Yeah. Anyways, whatever. Um, it seems as though you guys did really well in terms of in terms of the fundraising. Do you? What was the final amount? I saw that the I saw that you broke through the original one. I saw that it got extended. A couple, two, three times um, in terms of what the goal was. What did you guys end up with, roughly? So I know for sure we ended up uh, over twelve thousand British pounds. So I know because it was a British charity that everything was measured in British pounds. So we almost got, I want to say, double what our original goal was, which is around seven thousand six hundred and five British pounds, which approximately is a ten, ten about ten thousand. Yep, ten thousand U.S. dollars. So, but yeah, no, I would say Evathon was a great success. Um, obviously, I believe we kept the Tiltify um, drive open just a little bit for people who had missed it over the weekend or anything like that. And then at the same time, we also were taking bits and subs via Twitch. But I don't know if people are aware, but Twitch takes like 45 days to pay that out. And then they pay that out in US dollars. So at the time, we weren't even getting accurate numbers. So we have no idea. So Panda has it now. Um, she's able to see like the full numbers. I haven't logged in and checked, but she um she said it was at least six hundred U.S. dollars from Twitch. So wow. once we get that payout, which is probably sadly going to be in like November, but at least before the end of the year, we should be able to then get that sent over to um sent to special effect. I don't know if she'll if we'll route it through tiltify if we can add it on to the um to the drive already so that the number is holistic or if we have to do it separately yeah. well the other thing uh twitch keeps half of uh all sub payments yeah so, yeah and that so and it was 600 after the half yeah it was it was wow. 600 after yeah so um and like that's that's the frustrating part is that like it's very difficult to work with like twitch or any other business because if we say oh this money is going to charity they still need all that information and we aren't like we as you know, Eve players, we as just raising funds aren't privy to that information. So we can't just be like, yeah, give us your like tax information and let's get this going because yeah. it's very like confidential stuff. But it was it was a lot of fun. I want to say we gave away like giveaways, like in game giveaways was about, I want to say like over 100 billion isk worth. So like skins, ships, plex, as well as direct isk. Um, we would do giveaways for hitting milestones, but there was a lot of support from folks, a lot of support from CCP. Obviously, you guys as well. I know Dirk, you donated directly. <laughs> um, well, it, well, he it, donated a hundred bucks, well, and they finally donated hundred pounds. Too. I, I, I did, and uh, so somewhere, somewhere late that night, okay, uh, um, my my alter ego, blackout, uh, high school Dirk, um, tweeted something out there, and the next day. Um, I got a couple things back. I'm going, oh, fuck, what the fuck was I tweeting last night? And, and But one of the things that came back was from Elise going, ah, it doesn't matter. You know what? You were a good guy last night. You donated 100 bucks, And I'm like, oh, that's right. I did. Okay, yeah. And then I'm looking through my emails, and I had an email from my credit card company. And it's like 130 pounds, or, or it was from PayPal or whatever the hell it was. Uh, 130 pounds, or 100, no, 100 pounds. And I'm sitting there going, oh, shit. That's right. It was in pounds. <laughs> so where I thought I was donating a hundred dollars was approximately one hundred and thirty-one, uh, one hundred and thirty-one dollars. Yeah. So, yeah. I was the pound that low. 
drunk uh yeah, thanks, <laughs> drunk <laughs> donating <laughs> I thought, the, but no, I thought it, it was still early, it was a little, 50, but... Yeah, no, no I mean, like it was a lot of... Now. Yeah, it was a lot of fun, though. Um, a lot of yeah, people like were extremely supportive. And, and uh, yeah, it's it's really nice to be able to see, like, the fact that we help impact lives. I know um, a lot of the videos that we showed were people who were directly affected by um, donations such as... Or donation drives, actually, for s stuff such as what we were doing. Yep. No, I mean, that's, you know, that's great. You know, and what's really funny is, is that um, I think we were actually talking about it kind of earlier about, you know, some of the past support for, for, um, what is it? Accessible gamers? Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Able gamers. Able gamers. Then... Able, able gamers. And what was really funny was last weekend, last week on NBC News, um, NBC Nightly News on Saturday night, they did they had a segment on able gamers on that um you know i'm sitting there showing you know, i was showing my wife i go oh this is one of the you know this is one of the charities that you know this is not the one that's being uh being sponsored this year the one this year is basically the same thing but it but it's for the uk area right yeah and i mean they they have that's similar they tend to focus. yep so i mean they have similar concepts of like helping people with disabilities or the i want to say the inability to use a traditional controller slash keyboard mouse the ability to grant them being able to play games so sometimes that's you know like special effect is like eye gaze so like being able to play minecraft with your eyes um not having to use a controller and then i know like able gamers will directly modify controllers and then give them to people um so it's really like a collaborative thing like those those two groups while they're in different areas of the world they benefit from each other so i don't know if you guys remember but recently microsoft came out with a accessibility they call it like an accessibility controller and accessibility pad but it isn't really like a traditional game controller and it allows for like modification and everything and i say everything because like it allows for like really like i want to say a broad range of modification to a allow like being able to play with your hands or your feet or like not having to use your fingers or something like that. And so because Microsoft came out with that, um, they leveraged um, able gamers to be able to come out with that. But gr granted, that's great for able gamers, but then people like special effect can still benefit from that. And same with like eye gaze, just because special effects came up with something along those lines doesn't mean they're like hoarding it away like a lot of people do with their um, like intellectual property. They share it with everyone because then that allows more people to come into gaming. Yep. But anyways, that was a, uh, you yeah, know, it was a good, uh, it was, what, what are you going for? 72 hours? Yeah, 72 hours. And that, you know, you know, that was definitely a, uh, a, a, a large take. So that, you know, that's great. Once again, the Eve community steps up for, uh, for uh, good causes. Yep. Anyways, uh, I don't know what else we got. Uh, yeah, well, just in the last little bit of kind of, uh, kind of news that, uh, you know, little little stuff. Uh, they put out the uh, patch notes today for the October 9th. So this next, uh, this coming Tuesday, uh, that release. Uh, most of the stuff that is in this, uh, some people have called it scant, which I guess technically it is for a you know for a monthly release or whatever. Uh, with Vegas coming up though, that that takes them out. But uh, most of the stuff has been has been discussed already. Um, things like the nullification changes to combat interceptors, the 500 MN micro warp drive hick shit and collateral damage <laughs> to wormholes that got uncollateralized and and turned into a module. That shit's all October. However, there was one new piece of information uh, that will actually be related to the minutes that we end up talking a bit about tonight out of the balance section and whatnot, um, was the fact that, uh, is it the crow or the raptor? It's the crow. The I crow. The crow. Finally. The crow. For all you Kaldari interceptor pilots, you're finally going to get some, you know, sub two second align time shit. I am very happy about that because that was the one thing that these guys all complained about when the NT stuff went through because all the fleet interceptors for Crow was the only one that did not have a sub two align time with two I steps. You couldn't do it. So like, having that done. Well, what if you put the, yeah. the, like the low Enough. friction nozzle joint, like the rigs, was there no you way to get not under two? Get, you can't get it. There was no there. way to get under two. You could not do it. What about with get the, the, like the implants one. and drugs and stuff? Well, Training, come on. You want to fly an, okay, you want to fly a, a, a crow around in a, in a, in a, a sclepian set, then yeah, you're not. Yeah. But still, I was happy to see that because you know we have some 
finally some Caldari love, and we're the same as everybody else. Make all the ships within the same. The same. It, it, you, know, you know what? While you're at it, make the Amar uh, rookie ship able to be a better Sino. It's it's a fine Sino. You can fit just enough. You gotta have you gotta, you gotta have, you know fuel conservation five, but you can do it. Yeah, I use them. You gotta be able to land a oh covert Sino, but you know what's wrong? You, you, as long as you can fit two fifty, I think you could fit two like eighty three liquid ozone. So there you go. You can do it. Actually, wasn't there a comment? There was a comment somewhere about in the rookie, minutes in the yeah about rookie ships, right? Of like instead of yeah, it, it just in, being it given to you, you could read. Yeah, you could redeem it in some way, and s someone had brought up, they're like, yeah, so then that way people can always just pick whatever if they need a Sino ult in a rookie ship. I, it was either Jen or Suetonia that brought that up, yeah. but I do remember them saying that. Yeah, so I, I mean, there's, it's a valid I think point. there's going to be something for that, but I can't remember if that's NDA or not. I always just, uh, no, whenever no, I had my is... Sino spots packed, I always just brought like a, like a 10 or 20 stack of uh, Tech 1 expanded cargo holds. And, I'll, to and I'll, I'll bring it up because it was part of the minutes. It is not part of the minutes that we are going to talk about tonight, the new player experience, um, unless there really is something. Because I do you know, hate new players, Dirk. It's not that I hate new players. It's I hate talking about the same old fucking things about the new player experience and, and even going through the minutes on it and, and shit like that. It's like, whatever, just you know, make, but make, it, make it better. And... But it's good. I mean, one of the benefits, one of the things that I'm happy that they did uh, and we talked to Affinity and everybody that, that was working on that was the problem with the old one was that they couldn't iterate on it. You couldn't add things or plug stuff in or change stuff. It was like linear. You had to go through each one. And now you can plug things in and they can move stuff around. And it's basically you pick what you want to do. I think that's great. I know they're going to flush it out more, but I like it because, hey, if they can get it so that everything you can do in the game has like an NPE style tutorial, there's a ton of stuff that I haven't tried in ages because I just haven't done it that I'd love to try. Like, give me a PI tutorial in the game, and maybe I'll try that. Yeah, uh, hold on. I think that would be great wrong. for best. I think the new player experience needs to be improved. Every year it needs to be improved. For the last 27 years, it has needed to be improved. We need a new, better new player experience. It's However, never going to – it's always going to go. Exactly. You know, so every year – however, because this is a two-hour show – give or take okay there are certain there are certain of these like sections that we're not going to be able to do and okay. one of them one of them is kind of the new player experience and kind of the shit that ends up getting rehashed in there however since it got brought up within there was the thing that i believe it is a change that is going to be coming where um instead it was either a change or it, or, or or it was uh I don't know, either a request or something where instead of like when you dock up in a station and have no ship there, right? You're automatically given a rookie ship um, of your uh, of your race, right? That uh, there's going to be a button. And what what it seems to be is that this is a fix for the fact that you can't get them in citadels. So if they can just put the button thing in, then maybe they can translate that over to citadels as well. And you basically, you know, click, give me my rookie ship as a put. And if you don't want one, don't click it. Um, but then it got brought up secondarily to that. Can you please fix the Amar rookie ship so that, you know, it can be a Sino without you having to have like, you know, uh, you know, Sino four and all that kind of shit. Well, it would also be useful in the fact. Now, are you gonna now when you click the button? Is it gonna be where the the your hangar has to be empty of ships, or can you just click it and get a rookie ship even though you have ships there? Because that'd be kind of useful. I, I don't. I don't know that it went to that level of detail. I'm going to assume that it has to be in a place where you don't already have, Damn. you know, like a rookie ship, or you don't already have a ship. But um, I, r rather than it being an automatic thing, which may, which may have been where they were having to hang up with having it be able to work with the new structures instead of stations, um, this sounds like it might be. It, it actually didn't say that in there that this is the fix, but that's what it that's what it kind of sounded like to those of us who were who were reviewing it and talking about it at the time. I would be happy with. The, I'm just happy with the fact that I don't have to have a damn rookie ship spawned every time I move into a station when I'm jumping between a citadel and a station uh, in a system. Yep. So I, I just end up deleting them anyway, because if it's an Ibis, I'm not going to use it for a Sino. So I don't need this. It drives me crazy. So you, wouldn't crazy. Use, you wouldn't use that for a Sino? Do. No, I, I, I use the Catalyst mainly for the Sinos. Those are my favorite ones. I mean, I, 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 like just don't, I just don't give a shit which one I use, as long as it's not the Amar one. <laughs> 
And pears aren't that bad. Yeah, I, mean, I use them on my, one of my holes. I mean, they're uh, they're all fine except for the uh, except for the impair. The impair looks the coolest of all the rookie shit. That's only it's only not fine if you're a scrub. Well, th- that don't is, be a scrub. That is correct. But if I'm using one of my 350, so even the 300 one, I think is pretty damn tight. Like I think I, I think all of my stuff can can do 350. But it, but if it's a mar, you need you really need to get down. I'm sorry, the 300. Yeah, it's really you know you're still having to use two cargo expanders. I think even with three hundred LO. Um, yeah, there was one. Yeah, it, so it's I kind think of it was. Yeah, I remember because uh, I think one cargo. Well, one tech, one cargo expander. I think brings it up to where you can fit like two hundred ninety something uh, LO, which is kind of frustrating. Right. But... So, right. So you gotta go the other. So you gotta go the other one. But you know what? That's one of those things where it's like, hey, guess what? You're a Mar. That's just what happens to you. My advice <laughs> is to get good. All right. All that being said, uh, tonight is tonight is our version of of the minutes. Before we get into our version of the minutes, I do want to let you know that there is a more comprehensive version of the minutes that uh, at least the first part of it is out right now that I've just linked out there in in. Uh, Why are you advertising chat. our rival, Dirk? It's not our fucking rival because I'm on it. Um, oh, me, so you're Matterall, your and Artemis Albosa from Talking Stations. Um, he's double timing us. Yep. He's two um, um, went and did this is a little over three hours. It covers the first six sections, including the opening ceremonies or whatever. Uh, and then uh, at some point, part two will come out. We recorded it last night. It's also a little over three hours, but it goes through it goes through the rest of it as well. Um, but that goes through session by session and in pretty much. I don't want to say line by line, certainly not line by line, but, uh, but, but most of the stuff it's, you know, it's coverage as well as, you know, us talking about it and shit like that. So, you know, if you really got like nothing fucking better to do and want to hear it, um, you know, go ahead and go ahead and check that out. Having gone through six to seven hours worth of that analysis, I know that this show can't fucking do it all. And we find that out every year because we get drunk and stupid and we never get on to all the things we want to. So we're going to try and trim this down a little bit and kind of get to, Kind of get to some of the things that, you know, are, are I don't know, let's call it, you know, uh, we're going to fucking boil it down. All right. So, oh, we're gonna and, start, uh, real quick, we're I'm going to start off now. I'm going to put the link to. All right. So that link will, well, you click that and then you go down just like it's in the very first part of the page and click on that and that'll give you the minutes if you want to get in there with us. Like the actual PDF. Yeah. <laughs> Nair knocks like Dirk was a heavy beer drinker 35 years ago. Oh, wait, he still is. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm going to say, I haven't gotten out of, uh, you know, like, I only drink once in a while, but when I do. <laughs> yeah. He drinks beer. He likes beer. He doesn't drink beer until he blacks out. I like beer. Hey, I like beer. And I do black out some, once in a while. But whatever. That's just part. That's part of the fucking game, ladies and gentlemen. Um, anyways, we're going to go to the uh, Summit Welcome. Uh, look. Right off the bat, and I didn't mention this in those talking and stations things, and I really forgot about it. And then afterwards, I'm like, oh, damn, I forgot about it. But this would be way better than for open comps. It says it starts off with there's some discussion about the community's perspective of the CSM and how that can be improved. Now, they go into the whole thing about, um, you know, uh, it's really about the transparency that when something good happens and the CSM was involved with it, nobody knows when something bad happens. Nobody knows what the CSM's role in that was, but the CSM gets their fair share of blame. And, you know, are there some ways of, of kind of making the community's perspective of the CSM improved by maybe getting the word out there where they're, where they're helpful? Um, Brisk, you can talk to this, you know, you, know, you know, if you can about maybe like, you know, what you would like to see. But I'm going to give one hint about if you want to improve the community's perspective of the CSM, and that's going to be don't have so many CSM members um, telling parts of the community to fuck off and making it sound like you don't give a shit about parts of the community. (laughs) Maybe that might be a start. I think that's probably not a bad start. I mean, look, here's the thing. Uh, I'm a politician. Not everybody on the CSM are politicians. Some of them are very Donald Trump-like, to be downright frank. And they know what their voter base is, and they know who's going to vote for them, and they know who's not going to vote for them. And they don't care about uh, 
being nice or or or, or even trying to, to at least cater to the folks that they know are not going to vote for them. And if they don't think that's important, then they're then they're going to be honest about it. But and my philosophy there is that's fine. There's ten guys on the CSM for a reason. Ten players on the CSM for a reason doesn't have to be guys. It just happens to be this time around. Uh, and some of us, like me, I'm going to take my role seriously. I'm going to go out there and try to represent the entire game. Other people aren't going to do that, and they don't have to. You know, so I I, I think folks need to be to realize, and, and I say this a lot. CSM's not a monolith. Each of us are individuals. Each of us bring different things to the table. Uh, and, you know, we, we try, sometimes we do speak as one voice, but for, for a lot of times we're, we're speaking as individuals who happen to have this job. So when, when Aerith or Killaby or any of these guys say, you know, fuck wormholes and stuff like that, they don't represent what everybody on the CSM thinks. But it's no. very easy to get that in your head because, hey, this is what, this, that guy's on the CSM and he told us to fuck off, he's awful. But the reality is, is that that's not how most of us feel, or at least I know I don't feel that way. I know Jen doesn't feel that way. Tony doesn't feel that way. Um, you know, so I, even B and Merck have been in, have played in, in wormholes before. So it's not like we have no, you know, nobody's ever done that. So I, I, it is frustrating. But I think our issue, at least my issue with that, was more of a transparency thing. I, it, it drives me crazy when we, we do good stuff and we can't trumpet it or we stop bad things from happening and we can't say we did that. Um, it, it's. It's it's the the downside of being in a body like this that has an NDA. I mean, if this were a real legislative body, we could get out there and give press conferences and talk about all the great stuff we're doing until you guys are sick to death of it. Uh, but we can't do that. And, that, and that, that's frustrating sometimes. Absolutely. And this has been a thing that has gone on for years related to, you know, related to the fact of, you know, good or bad, what you guys do isn't really seen unless you guys are able to get out there and talk about it. And too often you're not even able to talk about when after stuff came out, really what your input was and worse. Right. If you guys stop something from coming out, then it can never be talked about. Right. You got to wait the five or seven years. Yeah. I mean, and that's, that's the thing. Like one of the things that I appreciated when I came on board was I finally signed the NDA. So, Sort and I could go and have dinner at, in Iceland, and he could tell me stories about stuff that happened in the past that, you know, he he, he couldn't tell anybody else because he couldn't tell anybody who wasn't under the NDA. So I got to hear about stories about stuff we fixed and stopped and, and moved around and, and kept from happening. That that and that and it's interesting because you know you don't hear these stories. And They're fun. I think they are. They're and it's and it's funny. Some of the stuff is funny, and I think part of the downside is there's always going to be folks who are unhappy because their area didn't get touched or got touched in a way that they didn't want it to get touched or, or get changed. And those folks are always going to be upset. And then you're going to have the inevitable, well, what are these guys doing anyway? They don't really do anything. They're just sync of fans. They're just CCP fanboys or whatever. And then on the other side, you got the guys who think that we're, you know, have a diabolical plan to make NullSec completely impervious to any kind of anything so that we can sit and rat and mine all day to our heart's content until our ears burst with the isk. I mean, so it's, you don't get, you get you get both sides of it. Either we're too powerful or we're not powerful enough, um, and it's frustrating. And then from my my other perspective, and I'll shut up because I'm talking too much. Is I want us to be visible. I want people to see that we're interacting with players. I want to interact with players. And it's funny because now I'm getting yelled at. Why are you in here? Why are you keep posting? Why do you keep posting in these threads? Let us talk. Well, I thought you guys wanted to hear from <laughs> from us. At least why we why we backed and changed or suggested something. Uh, and, and now we're getting told we're in there too much. So I guess that's a good song. People yeah. are always going to complain about something, though. That's the struggle you guys got to deal with. Yeah, it's life. You know, nobody can ever be 100% happy. And they shouldn't be because you know, things need to change to keep the game fresh. And anytime anything changes, that's going to upset somebody who liked the status quo. You know, we're seeing that right now with the NT changes and the ECM stuff. And I'm sure somebody's going to complain about the crow change, even though that's a great one. Drayden, did you want to do a shot or something? He did yeah, one. Oh, I, I did. I'll do oh, another one. one. Uh, you know what? I'm sorry. Hey, I'll I do another one. Busy, I was too busy dealing with the collateral damage of uh, you know of your uh, of your of your <laughs> yeah, perm, well, of your perma band there. But whatever. I, uh, I have happy belated uh, National Vodka Day, America. You know, grab yourself a Tito's yeah. and go. Well, it, oh no, that's right. Australia's like ahead of us. So I was like, technically, someone might Anyways. still be yesterday. Not going to deal a whole lot with uh, with kind of the opening part of the summit. There was stuff in there, you know, uh, but I, you know, I don't know that necessarily it was it was uh, 
it's worth it for us to talk about. Uh, uh, the EVE leadership team meeting, that was basically a, we'll get back to you later kind of a thing. Abyssal Dead Space. I'm going to try and sum this up, and that is Abyssal Dead Space seems to be in a pretty good place. I think people like it. I think it's fun. Uh, I mean, I've lost probably seven or eight bill worth of ships and maybe the same amount of implants <laughs> running new sites. But I've had a fun time doing it. It's been fun. I like the 20 minutes when I can sit down and know, all right, I know I'm going to get to play the game for this amount of time, and then I can go do whatever I want. I like it. And uh, I think I think a lot of people are going to, going to try it out, and they're going to like it too. I, I've watched people do them. Uh, I've seen Manic do them. I watched Rain do a few, but I have not done any of them myself. Just because You need I... to do some, Drayden. You need to man up and do some. They're really I, I, fun. I'm going to get blown really up. Like <laughs> I know it. <laughs> That's I know um, I should just on Evathon... I don't know if you guys are paying attention, but on Evathon, CCP Rise was there, and he talked about a lot of, like, running the numbers, seeing, like, how people participated, seeing, like, risk versus reward with the tiers. And he's, I think CCP overall thought it was, like, in a pretty good state. I think where he's more concerned about, or CCP is more concerned about with Abyssal, and I think he said it himself, was something along the lines of, like, to veteran players, it's a good state. Like, Abyssal Dead Space is great, but if they're marketing it as, you know, an expansion that came out in April slash May of this year or June, whenever the heck it was, but then newer players are trying really, really hard to get into it, it's very difficult. Like a newbie or an alpha, you know, within a month of playing, it's very difficult for them to fit, you know, a Caracal or a Vexor to be very efficient to, you know, run T1s. Like T1s are super scary for them. And so I think that's where they kind of like are maybe wanting to... I, my perception was that that's where they may want to tweak it, that they like how it is so far. Maybe they'll add more or less or whatever, but I think that's where they want to kind of cater to is maybe helping the newbies rather than making it harder at higher levels or what have you. Well, you would think that like the level ones and twos you should be able to do in tech one uh, cruises, I would think. Yeah. Like you shouldn't well, have so to be, you shouldn't like be required to pretty much go in with the Gila into those if they have like a lot lower of a payout. Yeah. It's just hard a well, lot I of the think... times for newbies. And, and that's the thing. I think once, you know, people start realizing and they, and they do a better job of writing down, you know, fits and stuff like that. I mean, people start, you know, be able to find easy stuff that they can throw together and run and run these uh, without as much trouble. I mean, it's, I, I, one of the things I like about it is I don't think it's ever going to be like burner missions where you know exactly what the mission is and you know exactly the shift fit, exactly that'll run it and how long it's going to take to run it. And, and you go and you do it properly and, and, and everything is all written down for you. Um, that's one of the things I like about this space because it's, it's always going to be different no matter what. I, I, like, I was running level fives. Uh, Suetonia had a great fit um, for a sacrilege, and I, I must have run 30 or 40 of them. And then I hit a bad room, and I got killed. And that was solid, solid ISK an hour, and I was making time and having a good time. But you, you hit a bad roll, and you, you know, there's nothing you can do about it. So I like that. There's always that little bit of, all right, what's going to happen next that you don't get running regular missions. There are three... You know, there are three takeaways that, three main takeaways that I had from this particular, well, besides the fact that I think that Abyssal Dead Space is probably the best PVE roll, the, the single best PVE rollout that they've had since Incursions. I would say that's, I mean, my limited experience, but I would say it's probably accurate. In, ter you know, in terms of... Uh, well, certainly more people can take advantage of Abyssal Dead Space than than even Incursions, you know, you know right, really. Right, because uh, you don't need a group for that. Correct. That's why I like it. You know, but um, um, just in terms of kind of the uptake from those who are, the, you know, it's this this right here you can point to as a success. Forward operating bases and all that kind of shit, not the same kind of, you know, you, you know not the same sort of thing. This has pretty much out of the gate, uh, it has worked. I think generally, um, and and people have run it at a reasonably high level, or you know, you know quantity level, uh, you know, of people out there. So so you've got. I, I don't think you can say anything, but this has been a success for them. Yeah, I'd say so. I mean, I think, and I think the meetings reflect this, where they talked about how like abyssal roles were not, um, like people aren't seeing them on ships. Like I know in Black Legion. It's not like, hey guys, here's how you fit your ship. By the way, make sure you get an MWD with this fitting or this speed or whatever. Like, it's not being used like fleet wide, but I know tons and tons of people are using them for like small gang, solo PvP stuff like that. And um, 
I had mentioned that to Rise. I know I had mentioned that to him at FanFest. I found him, like, outside of bar, and I was like, hey, you know, people are probably going to be mad. Like, this doesn't really cater to, like, the large groups. And he goes, who cares if it doesn't cater to the large groups? They've been getting stuff for years in the past. Why can't we cater things to small groups? And, like, it makes sense. Like, exactly. it's really it really helps the small groups, but at the same time, it's like, it's not excluding these large groups from doing anything. So I think it's like a really good benefit for the game itself. Goonie yeah, DuPont out there says, I've never tried to business. I have better ways to get rich. And that's fine. The, the, the point is that in the game that there are different ways of doing things and, you know, and some, as far as PVE should be either enjoyable or challenging or new or, you know, you know, whatever. Right. And not be broken as fuck. Uh, in one way or another, especially in the really bad ways where it's no fun to do. Uh, apparently, you know, this ha this has worked out. So it's a success for, you know, you, you know for CCP. Well, it's, I, it's, you know it's dynamic. It frustrates me time. when we think about stuff only in terms of how much money I can make from it. You know, the money is nice as a, as a side thing, but sometimes you just want to do something fun. You know, I want to be able to do something that I can accomplish or complete in, in 20 minutes without having to worry about, uh, you know, if it's going to take me two hours or if it's going to take me, you know, half an hour, am I going to be able to log out in time? No, I know I will. I will be done in 20 minutes no matter what. So I think that that adds a benefit that you don't get doing missions or anything else. So I, there's room for all of that. And, and the reward doesn't always have to be the, the, the main reason to do it. Now, there was apparently one thing that may or may not be broken, depending on what your perspective is of this. And it got brought up at the meetings. Sort Dragon asks about players activating the gate to leave the sites and waiting for the ship to be returned to their original system, but dying while waiting for the jump to actually happen. I can't tell if this is something that absolutely should friggin' exist or if... When you hit the when you hit the button on the door to say okay I'm done you know I finished the site and I'm here at the gate let me out that if the clock is ticking down but you still but you don't have enough time to actually get through the door before the building implodes like I actually I mean, kind of find that well, sort of funny th this that would like mean, you, know, I, you finished but you didn't hit, get to the door quite yeah. in time this would mean it's that it's coming is. down to like you know three seconds two or three seconds left. And then you finish. So, but it's, it's from the it's from the lore. I mean, the lore says that the that the warp thing that you're in, or the but the area of space that you're in, is going to collapse in the twenty seconds. If you hit the door and you're warping out, you're not there anymore. But are you, so you warping out? Die. Well, but what if the pocket ends at the actual time, like you know, the final exit when you come out into K space? That is the edge of the pocket. So, like the warp tunnel I, is part of the pocket all the way into the room. What if you got one I, I foot out it, the door, but the building explodes? Like, did you make it, it out? It's it, but the thing is, it's not so much. It's it's you're jumping through the door before it closes at the very end, like when when it's dropping down like this. If you can get out of there, you're out. You know, as soon as you get as soon as you hit that button, you're out. Like Doug says, out. Eve's the harsh mistress. <laughs> I think I think in this instance, yeah. it was probably more of a bug than an intended mechanic. It's kind of like, like whenever I activate the gates, they always remind me of like Plex beacon activations, where like, yeah, you have to like you activate it, but then your ship has to align. You gotta warp out. Or is this like you guys are talking about doors where it should be just kind of like jumping a gate? You hit jump, you jump, or you don't. And so, but I think it's functioning more of like the beacons. So, in reality, people make I hit it to the. People make it to the gate, they hit jump, but then their ship goes through some animation, and then they explode, and they're like, well, wait I a minute. I hit jump, I, and the smart bomb jump. still killed me. No, <laughs> I mean, I, my, my whole thing like is, no, I, you hit the button, the timer stops. That's what should happen, period. You hit the button, the maybe, timer stops. Maybe, maybe instead of you getting out, what there should be is that you warp up to a big cherry red button and hit the button. Well, it's almost, it's almost like the Star Trek thing. You I know, can't like, argue well, with that. Well, hold on, like so, in Star Trek, if Star Trek, if they're beaming out, you know, before they're they're still like, they're still like faded, but still there. Are they vulnerable at that point? No, no, phasers have gone through that. Oh, yeah, phasers go through that. Damn. Well, then maybe uh. Maybe you end up on the other Frisky's side. It's right, just a meat then. pocket. Yeah. So. <laughs> Anyways, uh, but I think one of the one of the big things that came out of the minutes uh, that is all on the all on the kind of future possibility, maybe who knows kind of table is CCB Rise is also wondering about the possibility of ship mutaplasmids that would affect the bonuses stats of ships instead of just modules. That'd Man. be so funny. That just 
depending on how high the stats can go, that could make for some like. Forget I mean, about. Forget, now, would they a, would they have yeah, limits? Yeah, yeah, in a perfect because role, this is this is one of the problems. Just an AT ship. This I was going to say AT ships. That, you know, if all of a sudden you have like you know you know super crazy you know type stuff, right? Like like. Assume for a moment that they are going to, that they would be were they to introduce something like this responsible with it because you can't have shit get all crazy out of whack when you're talking about I know about like they got they got it yeah okay. you can't have what do we think extra about, what do we think about the idea of being able to do this with ships and think about this not just from the standpoint of wouldn't it be fucking cool if my Ishtar like had Dude, mega, it be really fucking mega cool bonus. okay Hold on. but think about it from the standpoint of CCP development time in having to go through ships it's just to, number adjustment to having to go through ship it's not just numbers adjustment number as far adjustment, as them coding Dirk. as far as them coding okay let me slap my magic mutaplasmid onto all of these ships out here or would you like only say well only this class of ships or only that class of ships well, that's what remember we, this is stuff they got to, to cruisers, actually develop. Right? That, that's what we like, were saying because we're thinking about it if it's abyssal space cruisers can only fly in abyssal space why not only affect cruisers and then let's say you want to like simplify it. um actually so it'd only be t1 t2 faction pirate cruisers no t3s yeah but you can use the new plasmids on on modules that aren't for cruisers like you can use them on like battleship uh yeah. mwds and for but not but not every but not every type of module so yeah but not every type of module yeah but like i think i mean i, mean, I, I, I think would be, be surprised cool. if it's anything higher than cruiser i think i think rain's right i think they'd and, be surprised yeah. if they did that and I think, like, the numbers would have to be reasonable. So instead of, like, you know, like, hey, your Vexor can now field 10 drones because you got a really good role. It'd be like, hey, your Vexor drone range has increased. No, I see. I think, like, they'll make because, it again, let's reasonable go back adjustments. To, let's go back like, to what it said here, okay? Let's not hypothesize about, you know, and, you know, and pretend that we just want to make up our own kind of version of this that would affect the bonuses stats of the ships. So the stuff that already, you know, the stuff that's yep. already there... And tweaking that, not yeah. correct. That, that's what they said. They nothing, said they'll only be able to change adding. the stats that are already existing on the ship. They're not going to add new stats or anything like that. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I mean, they would I'll, never I'll change honest, the I core see... behavior of the ship. I, I would tweak, also tweak assume, its existing stats. I would assume that correct. it would only affect the the ship bonuses, like the roll bonuses and stuff. I don't think yeah. it's going to affect like the overall shields or the resists. Um, because that'd be pretty dumb no, if yeah. you could like <laughs> imagine getting like an Ishtar that's like ninety nine percent resists on on shields. Yeah, uh, like negative yeah, fifty that, or some that shit. Work. But no, I mean, I, mean my, I think that part of tweaking things would be like relatively easy in development time. What were you saying, Brisk? The problem that I have, and I think my biggest concern is they need to come up with something to do when you brick something. Because now yeah. all of the, you either just recycle it or I you think delete they said it. That. I know. They said, I, I'm it's in the that minutes. They, they, I, I, we talked about it, and it's in the minutes. And I, but I really want to see some progress on that before they start introducing ship stuff. Because I just, can you imagine? Well, you can always reprocess the ship, but you don't. I, I you don't get a whole lot from can. that, but. But it's like I mean, just and the, the mutant plasma I, wouldn't affect the amount that you. Well, I guess in a in a way you would get you get a reprocess it for a, a normal ship that's not bricked, but. Right, and that's just I think it's 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 just going to be kind of crazy. So, I don't know. I, I I can see both sides of this. I like the idea. At the same time, I'm nervous about the idea. But then again, I was nervous about the original media plot. Yeah, they the, didn't turn out to be thing, as bad as we all thought they were going to be. So Very yeah. limited, though. Very limited in the number of modules that you're talking about. Yeah, well, also, the um, as far as the ships, though, like, not only, like, the size of the ship, but the types of ships. Because, I mean, like, are you going to let them use mutaplasmids on, like, Hictors? Are you going to, like, uh, Rain was saying, like, AT ships? Like, what if someone puts a mutaplasmid on a Tana and gets like a nice roll on it that's like almost even more broken because now nice even one. in the alliance <laughs> tournament you're only paying the at points for a normal atana but you get a unless they came out with a rule that says no you, mutaplasmid ships in the in the at you're not talking yeah. about things like high slots though you're not talking about things like you know slots at all it's no not like, but oh if my you're God, getting a ship that's you know, worth this many points and you're getting bonuses that are better than than well, that ship what i would be. say is so. it is absolutely and utterly ridiculous to be thinking of anything based on what the impact on the AT is going to be. Just uh, yeah, you don't balance exactly. the game around the AT, but I mean... They never balance the game around the AT. They but I mean, do I do want... Do you, I mean, I guess if it's an AT ship, there's, the people don't really go around roaming. Stop talking about often. AT ships. All right, fine. What about Tech 2 ships, though? Are we going to let Tech 2 ships? This is what I mean. Come on, Dirk. Like, 
this is what I mean by kind of like taking an idea sort of like, you know, way too fucking far because like you got to you got to keep it within the realm of 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 like even an eve level reality because once you start getting off into this crazy ass shit, this once again comes back to is this really something that we want CCP to have to deal with when we're already bitching about things like balance and 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 that sort of stuff, you know. They already have enough problem with things like Tech 3 cruisers, you know, and like the tweaks that have to be made left, right, and sideways on things that they no longer even fucking understand. So, um, anyways, I think it's interesting. Devil's in the details. The CSM thought that it was interesting. I thought it was interesting. I mean, I have have tried to keep an open mind throughout all of these processes, even when I hear something that I think is kind of crazy. Because sometimes, you know, you think about it and you, and you, you talk about it, you, you kind of find a way in the middle and something that sounded, started out sounding nuts ends up being something cool. So I try to keep an open mind about things. Krusty, Krusty Snuggy out there said, is Eva gamer, gamer dad game? Uh, yes. It really kind of is, isn't it? Like, if you're not a we dad kids, already, man. like, you probably will be by the time you get done playing. Oh, boy. Too much. Or mom. Gamer mom. Anyways, oh, anyways, um, okay, I'm gonna get off of the abyss because again, we gotta like you know try and keep this as tight as possible, and and I know that all these things can kind of run off. And look, guess what? The next thing in line, I'm not gonna save for fucking later. I'm gonna roll it up right now. War declarations, and I'm going to start this off by saying that uh, I'm gonna let you guys talk for a minute while I get another beer. Go, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. It's not collateral damage if your shit is the primary. If somebody sends a missile down the pipe of your fucking car, you weren't collateral damage. You were literally the fucking target. And what right about now, versus blue. right now, the target is on those who declare war out there. What about red versus blue? Red versus blue would probably be one of those ones that would be looked at for how do we make sure that that kind of a uh, uh, two-sided war, all right, uh, remains intact, right? Like, if you if you really yeah. had to think about whether or not they were going to, like, it's not like they're going to, you know, it's not like the, the, the intent would be to delete war decks entirely so that we fuck up that over there. More the things that apparently they said they came out. And I'm going to read the first paragraph here. In the EVE leadership meeting, which happened a couple meetings ago, as far as timeline flows here, uh, the CSM was presented with numbers. And let me just clarify here. Not just numbers, but apparently and a lot of fucking graph porn. Resulting from research into the state of war declarations in EVE, and those numbers quite starkly showed how asymmetric the situation is and how war declarations allow a small number of players to negatively impact a huge number, huge, huge, huge even, uh, number of people with low risk. Low risk meaning that you buy your right to have a war, you no longer really have risk other than who you're going after. Um, These numbers may be discussed further by CCP at a later date, okay? Apparently they were presented with some very stark numbers out there that showed not just kind of how war decks happen, who they are are, uh, started by, against what size entity they they are started against, but also some fallout that tends to occur from that. And I don't think it actually comes out in this one here. It may actually come out in a different, it may be the economy section or something like that. It was that. in the economy section. Yeah. If Larrikin, Larrikin brought us a bunch of, of stats. We got to see the MER early uh, for, uh, I guess it was August. It, has, it hadn't come out yet. Oh. Um, and then we... Um, he showed us some of the stats because we had asked for them after we had our war deck talk. And this came after the war deck uh, meeting, though, the very first war deck meeting we had. Or I guess it was the main war deck meeting we had. And I mean, look, I, I can't get into the details of what they showed us, but I, what I have said and I will keep saying is that when I saw those numbers, I think, I think it was all of us looked at that and it was like a gasp went up around the table because it was, it was just nuts. I mean, it basically was saying is that these smaller groups, when they get war decked, their activity rate, wherever it is, drops cataclysmically during the war because their only real response to getting war decked is to dock up and then stop playing the game. And then after the war, they don't come back. Uh, and that's just 
you can't that, that that's killing it's killing the game when you have these smaller groups or these or these players that are in transition periods where they're not newbies because they're not still in an NPC corp they're they're finally they've got a handle on the game to a certain extent they're playing it they're starting to enjoy it they're starting to get out and meet people and they finally want to go and they want to you know join a, a corporation or do their own thing with a group of friends so they set up a corp and they get out of the newbie corp and then they get war decked by one of these guys who are just trying to find they're just trying to do what they want to do and they have no way of fighting back in, in a meaningful way against guys that have been playing the game for a long time to do this all the time and it's like a handful of groups that are, are responsible for the vast majority of these war decks and they just dock up and then they dock up and then they stop playing. And they think, well, I got to wait seven days until this war is invalidated by Concord. So what am I going to do in the meantime? They go play something else. And then they're like, oh, well, uh, maybe I'll play Eve again. But then they just stop playing. Let's, and it's let's even say- easier to stop playing when you're on alphas now because you don't have any skin in the game. You don't have any money in the game. And let's know? just answer something up front. OK, we all know that there is a counter to being war decked, fighting back. However, what the data is apparently showing Okay, is that in practice, the groups that are war decked, okay, far too often, are not the type to fight back. They're the type to dock up. They're the type to quit. Okay, and what it, it, the whole entire war deck system is based on an idea that came about a long time ago that in practice, cannot possibly have worked out the way they thought it was going to be. How do we create conflict? How do we create a level of risk in high sec, okay, that will cause organization to fight organization in this place where fighting is not supposed to occur? However, over time, it seems, what they have found out is, it ain't fucking working out like that. So even so, and, even if somebody says there is this counter over here, if nobody is using that counter, and what it is resulting in is the potential for bad retention, lost pilots in the game, people who sit there and go, fuck this, don't want to do it. Then you've got to weigh the whole thing of whether or not even philosophically something is right. In practice, it is just wrong. I think- and the funny thing is, is that, you know, FanFest a couple of years ago, and I, Rain, I think you were probably there, if you remember, uh, they did this, they did the study of, whether ganking or getting killed as a, yep. as a noob has an impact on whether or not you stick around. And everybody assumed that if you were a new player and you got blown up in space by another player in PvP, that you would, you know, rage quit. Oh, this sucks. I can't believe I died and walk away. And the, the data was actually the opposite. That when you died, that, that gave you a reason to want to get, you got, you want revenge. You want to get back in there. You want to fight. You want to learn how to beat this guy the next time it happened. And it actually was good for player retention. And that's the funny thing with these war decks. It's not about noobs dying or, or people getting killed. They're not dying at all. They're not, they're not leaving. They're docking up and they're not playing the game. And that's the difference. It's not that these guys are getting killed. It's that the, the best, the meta for dealing with a war deck, when you're in one of these groups that can't fight, really meaningful, find a meaningful way to fight back, it's just stop playing. That's not good. That's, that's killing the game. You yeah. can't do that. Well, so we've got to come up with a way to fix that. And I, you know, and I think that- – this is something that I think a lot of people have known for a long time, okay, that um, uh, war deck groups, the people who specialize in this kind of thing, they're not out there looking for a fight. They're not out there looking for people who will be on their level to fight against, by and large. Red versus I mean, blue, red versus blue, we could take that out of the equation. We can take kind of, you know, people that are using well, it for think, mercenary, you know, propositions I, or I, things I, along those lines out dr- of the dr- equation. Dr- I mean, I want to throw that in, too. First camper point out, honestly, the huge problem I found with war decks is neutral repping alts. And I think that just supports what you're saying. Like, these guys aren't looking for a fair fight. It's not like red versus blue where they're saying, hey, we have a bunch of guys, you have a bunch of guys, let's war deck each other and, like, go out and just brawl in high sec where no one can really interfere. What ends up happening is all these people end up, you know, war decking all these different groups. And then they're trying to like game the mechanics of like, oh yeah, we're going to use like neutral logi alts. Cause then that way I can stay alive and you can't really attack them, but I can attack you. And it turns into this like whole, like even with newbies where like, it turns into this like really like big clusterfuck of like mechanic in game mechanics. where like, as a newbie shouldn't know, maybe a lot of 
like long term players might know, might not know, like especially high high sec mechanics, like knowing when you can shoot suspects versus when you can shoot criminals versus when Concord comes versus when they don't. Like a lot of people are very like unclear of when they can do stuff like that. So the best solution is okay, dock up, drop corp, go somewhere else. And that's not exactly. a good solution by any means. Yeah. And uh, right. Wildstar, thanks for the three months. And Liz Re Live, thanks for your seven months. And I, and I think, you know, personally, whatever they do with Vortex, one of the other things I want to see regardless is neutral logic needs to go away. That is horseshit. That is completely designed to get around the entire Crime Watch system. I hate it. If you if you are a neutral logic and you rep somebody that's in an active fight in a war, you should get concorded, period. I mean, you are involved and you should not be. So blow your ass up. There's just but, no excuse for that. And that needs the, to go away. But those are actually those are actually just kind of uh, uh, secondary or tertiary even even kind of you know elements of the larger problem that's involved. If we act if, okay, and, and granted, a lot of what the community thinks out there is anecdotal in nature. Okay, we don't have the data. However, these guys were presented with some pretty, apparently, ugly freaking data, right? But anecdotally, most of the community, over the many years that this has been discussed, this is not some shit that just came up today or during the summit. This has been discussed for friggin' years. And everybody out there seems to know that the way war deck operations have tended to work, by and large, in high sec, is again, not looking for a good fight looking to go after prey and preferably prey that isn't going to fight back very much but they hope that it does still undock okay there are words for that out there i don't want to say it's intentionally griefing or intentionally bullying or shit like that but it kind of is and we've known that for a while almost to the point where you've got to ask hasn't ccp also known that for a while is this are these numbers like new to them? Of course they're not. They didn't just figure this shit out like right before the summit. They've known it too. I don't know about that. I don't know about the numbers because I think if you're not looking for it, if you're not no, that trying might, that might to, to look at the data, I don't think, they, I mean, really. Well, yeah, but people have been crying they may, about. They may have turned their head to it like a pedo it. priest. Well, I'm, I'm just saying like if, if it's been, a, if it's been an issue been that's been brought up. It to CCP as often as it has over years and years, and they just are now looking at the numbers in this in-depth? I, I honestly, from at least from what I can tell, and, you know, granted, I'm only new, I'm, I'm only been on those CSM for a couple months. Um, this is an issue that comes up every CSM, and I know CSM 10 in particular fought pretty hard to try to get something done, but it never got to be a priority with CCP, and I think this time around, they they finally I think they finally were like okay you guys keep bringing this up you keep bringing it up you keep bringing it up we'll, we'll do some we'll start doing some preliminary research they start doing the research I gave them the stuff on the War Deck project so that they can go look at all the stuff those guys had written up on that Discord and I know they started talking to people you know internally and they started gathering the data and I think then they realized when they saw the data how completely screwed up this is and you know and I and I I I, I, I pride myself on being level headed. I don't tend to run around like a chicken with my head cut off. Sort is the, is the one that has the emotions on the sleeve and this is going to ruin the game type arguments. I don't make those very often, uh, if at all. But when I saw these numbers, I was like, okay, we have to do something. And frankly, the way that these numbers are, it warrants turning it off immediately and including all the collateral damage of red versus blue and what do we do about high sex structure proliferation and all that other nonsense because we're losing players and we have to stop that i mean there are people that are getting deterred from playing the game and that's not good for the long-term health of eve if we keep losing you know i've always the way i've always been to explain mmo uh, dynamics are it's like a bucket with a hole in it and you got to keep filling the bucket and if you can't keep filling the bucket, then eventually there's not going to be any water in it. And that's when the game dies. It, so you need to it, have it, it, it that could be It could be that what is needed in the short term, okay, if what they have now determined by actually turning an eye, if what you're saying is they didn't have the data before, but now they have the data, it means that, you know what, they have turned a blind eye away from it for a very long time because this has been an issue for a very long time. But let's say they have the data now, right? And if what that takes is a short-term kind of, you know, really sharp stick in the eye sort of fix, right? What we have to make sure is that if they do a short-term fix 
to stem the freaking kind of you know shit that's been going on out there right that it doesn't just get left at that because the one thing that is actually going to be needed from you know you, you know from from this and it wasn't discussed here in any way shape or form but it would need to be part of it is a larger look at you know you know what what i have termed related to this okay remember that guy that got banned for like doxing manic and whatnot his whole shit basically started off with high second war decks and a whole bunch of shit like that Okay, it was a whole thing out on Twitter. It was a whole thing on Reddit. It was a whole thing in a bunch of places. But what I termed as uh, a comprehensive high sec reform. Okay, you cannot just look at one of these issues in isolation and go, oh, that's the problem. Because you can remove this piece of the problem. You can even fix this piece of the problem. But the idea of risk and reward and all those kind of balance issues, even with high sec, is something that takes a more nuanced approach to it. But if they need to fix it in the short term, fine, as long as they do come back to it in a reasonable amount of time in order to solve these other issues. Otherwise, all we are is left with they took away they they took away war decks entirely in order to fix this problem, but never really got back to it to do anything about the stuff and, and then just left it as is, which would also be bad. Yeah, and I don't think that would be I don't think that's rational to think that they wouldn't do that. I mean, besides, uh, you know, if they don't if they don't fix the war decks and how is Horde going to keep their monopoly and perimeter? I mean, you know, <laughs> so it's, it's, there, there are legitimate reasons for war decks that are still being used that are not griefing. Uh, but the problem is, is that the vast majority of them are these groups that, that are, that are going after players and they, they do it at their way of farming. It's fun. They enjoy it. Uh, they make us doing it. Uh, they turn it into a science. Uh, and some of these groups will spend billions and billions over the years in war deck fees, but they make it back. And the stuff that they're able to get ganking, you know, the one jump freighter can cover a war if, if, if they gank the right guy. So I think at the end of the day. But that's um, not ganking. That's, that's not, not ganking. ganking. It's, it's, it's war. It's, it's, it's war. It's, it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's smart. And it, and it requires them well, to, I mean, to be good at what ganking. they're doing. That's not war decks. Let me rephrase that. That's not war it's decks. Not. That's, that's, that's ganking. And I think. Ganking and, is ganking. And you can't really blame the war deck corps and alliances. Like, I mean. I, I don't. They're doing, no, they're, I agree. They're there are the probably mechanics. people who do. But I mean, there are tons of players who are like, hey, this mechanic's kind of broken. I'm just going to abuse the shit out of it because it benefits me. And that's what they're doing. And if CCP is just going to let them do it, like, why not? Like, same with, I believe it was low sec when plexing and low sec wage you like billions of isk or, you know, with, if, you know, at the moment when running, you know, roar goals or just a carrier riding makes you billions of this and you can just do it pretty much like risk free. So I why will, not? Why not do all of these things? Like, why not? I will not blame people for using the mechanics that CCP gives them. OK, however, as with anything else, once you begin to take something for too long, too far and abuse the living fucking shit of it recognize the pendulum may literally swing back on your ass eventually and it may completely wipe you out of the career so right now what i would suggest this is not this is something i hope will not go away even though this subject has been talked about for years okay and has never gained a whole lot of traction past the point where it gets talked about all right hopefully this will and those people that are involved in those careers, uh, you know, related to war decks, they may want to go out and get some fucking retraining because I think that they may get rust belted on this one. I think they may end up being fucking Detroit in the automotive industry and find themselves out of a fucking job with somebody else fucking building cars. And, and I, I mixed a whole bunch that. of shit, I, but you know I, what I mean? Look, I, my whole thing, honestly, and I, I've said this before, the gravy train ends someday. And these guys have been on it for 15 years, and they're at the they're at the point now where Eve needs players. Eve does not want to see any any loss of players. We're down from the number the, the sugar high of 2013, and it's not going to get any easier as we get more games and more and more different types of games that come in and try to, to invade our space, um, figuratively, obviously. Um, so we're, we're, we need to make sure that the game stays fresh and we get new people in. And that means we can't deter people from playing the game for weeks at a time because somebody thinks it's fun. Well, and, you know? and, uh, so it needs to get fixed. There's just no way around. And I want, it, I want it fixed before uh, I'm off of CSM, to be honest. Well, Bacon's, Bacon's Boy? I, I'm, I, hope I, I, hope I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. So what happens if they all become gankers? You know what? I hope to God that's exactly what they become. Because crime in high sec 
should absolutely be able to thrive because when a criminal goes out and mugs a motherfucker okay he knows exactly what he's doing committing a crime but it was worth it well and all that also kind of ties into what uh feed was saying just above that he was saying um uh that basically Re- completely removing non-consensual PVP is what killed Ultima. No. This isn't remove. Well, th- I would say this, this isn't it's completely not, remo- not, removing War Dex is all, all the non cons Well, I was just saying, like, the, the idea there's is, still the going to be non-consensual fighting in high sec. There has the to be. There, there's going to be non-consensual there's fighting in high sec. There's non-consensual fighting in low sec and in null sec and in wormholes. Eve is about non-consensual PVP. Right. It's always going to be about non-consensual PVP, no matter how much Matterall wants to make it about unicorns and, and hugs. Exactly. You know, the bottom line is that's what this game is about. Now, the issue is whether the balance between the, the guy who initiates the fight and the guy who takes the fight or the guy who is, who is forced to, to take the fight, how out of whack that is. And sometimes it's really out of whack and sometimes it's not out of whack. And the goal is to try to get it to the point where both sides want to fight and that they enjoy it and that it's fun or at least somebody learns a lesson or they realize they screwed up. Somebody else, you know, gets gets to do what they want to do, whatever. Yeah. I mean, that that's well, that's the goal. It doesn't have to be equal, but it needs to be at least within the realm of reason. And right exactly. now, the numbers are so skewed in favor of the attackers that there's nothing that defenders really can do but log off. So yeah, they and, do. And Zugbu's Zug, point is going. Zug Zugbu is the point, okay? And and it actually gets brought up. And here, Zugbu says, "How do how do you suicide gang citadels? You wouldn't, okay? There needs to be a mechanism in there, which is why." You've got to take a more than just cut this shit, you know, cut this kind of thing out, you know, entirely, right? War decks may have a place. Uh, the concept of how you how you authorize, because remember, ganks are unauthorized combat in high sec, all right? And there may be a way that you've got to come up with authorized combat. It's just not the way they built on the fucking napkin in, I don't know, 2003 or 2004 or whatever it was that nobody knows is still around. And it actually got put out there. Um, a nominate says the issue with war decks is they can't be removed completely due to the high sex structures. Having war decks limited to corpse with structures and adding victory conditions would be one way. Opting out completely would mean the corporations would only exist as social structures. CCB Fozzie says this is one of the leading ideas at this time. The problem is that idea so far, at least from anything I've fucking seen out there, is just a half-baked kind of, but what about if you could only war deck like groups with structures or anything like that? And the problem is, is that the people that would war deck at that point, they really wouldn't care about the... Hold on. The abusers of it wouldn't care about the structures. They would just look for people that own structures that, that have care. ships in space so that they can go out there and like do the same thing that they're doing now. So that would still need to be a nuanced approach to the whole thing. But we do need to find a way of making that trash in fucking high sec structure land fucking die. Like like nobody I here is calling that. for risk free. Nobody here is calling for risk free high sec. Absolutely not. Not yeah, unless and I think you also I, make it reward free high sec. Okay. Well, and that's the point. I could, li- I could live once you be, dial it's not going to be zero. Re- rewardless. I mean, the, the point with the structures, I think, really is to, and, and what I would suggest, it's not only that, that you have to have a structure that's in space, but when you war deck somebody, you have to identify what your headquarters structure is. And if that group can kill that structure, then the war is over. And it shouldn't be something that requires, you know, three timers over a two-week period or whatever, because that's not going to work in high sec. It's not going to work with, with the terms of the war deck. So it needs to be something different, one of these propaganda structures they're talking about or something else. But you put that in the system, and you make that the target, and both sides know where it is, and then they can go. And if the, if the defenders want to fight, they go and they kill this thing, and the war's over, and they win. Or the high sec guys go kill the defenders, and the war's over, and they win. Or they don't kill it so that they can farm these guys for longer. That's fine. But at least it gives the defenders a meaningful way to stop the war besides logging out. And that's what I would like to see. Yep. So anyways, well, I think that we could have uh, actually turned uh, the war declarations thing into an entire show. We could have done shots every time somebody said war deck. Um, We're not going to do that. I don't want to die. I just want to finish this by saying, look, I think it's great. Number one. All you high sec motherfuckers out there that think that you need somebody on here, I'm going to point out two things to you. One, this got brought up for the first time in the minutes in, 
I actually can't remember how long. Certainly in this level of detail, like in the pre, I'm not even sure, like minutes encapsulated kind of thing. The other thing that I think is really funny is that if you go through the entire conversation here, at least as far as the minutes goes, uh, I see a bunch of uh, Brisk says and Sort Dragon says and the Judge says. And you know what I don't see in here? Uh, look, there's even an Aerith says. Holy shit. Uh, no, Steve. In a, quick, in a quick visual scan, I don't find a Steve said, which is the one guy on the summit, or uh, you know, one guy on the CSM who is tangentially in a way or apparently the guy for for the you know the CSM as far as high sec goes this is all null sec guys who straight up fucking basically said delete this bitch it is broken so please don't ever fucking say again how null sec doesn't come to the stepping fucking stand, you know stone of of like trying to help high sec this is literally the biggest bitch that HiSec as a like aggregate has brought up for fucking years. Shots, and then I'm going to tell you something. Yeah. Okay. Well, now. Well, go ahead. Do, what, why don't you tell us, like, you know, while, while we're pouring shots? I want to tell you the first thing is is that just because the name is not in the minutes does not mean that nobody said anything. So, Of course it uh, does, just, because just if it meant something, mind. it would have been in the minutes. That's what we've learned. Uh, okay. Sort said... Regardless, regardless, just because Steve's name isn't there doesn't mean he didn't have anything to say or that nobody talked about it. There's sometimes the CSM had a discussion. That means everybody was talking. But that what I will say is, is that when we sure. met as a CSM, before we got to the, the actual summit, Shots. We sat down and we said to ourselves, what are the four things we want to bring to CCP and let's make sure everybody's on board and we're unanimous about it. And number one was war decks, period. So yes, the goon CSM, the CSM full of null sec blobbers, the number one issue we had that we wanted CCP to fix was war decks. So that's, that's why I get frustrated with these guys that think that the only thing we care about is protecting our work walls and our miners and null sec and be able to do whatever we want because it's horseshit. We want what's best for the game. And the best thing for the game is I want new players coming in. I want them sticking around. I want them getting trained up and getting into shifts so I can blow them up, period. Can, and if anything can, is stopping that from happening, that needs to get fixed. Can I reverse on myself just a se second and play devil's triangle advocate and say maybe the reason why the goon CSM kind of, you know, uh, majority on there wants to do away with war decks is because they want to strengthen ganking and make burn jitta better again no that's okay not. Th that was literally I just mean, something i came up with like you know like like off the cuff after funny. that last or, or, shot or, or well it's the guys in the chat saying oh well you guys just want to protect your jump freighter routes in the high sec no our jump freighter guys unless they are like, you know, the one guy in my corp who, who loses a jump freighter every month because he just forgets and, and falls asleep on a gate, you know, you're not going to lose him to a war deck. Okay. It's, it's very rare. Um, the fact is the reason why we want to fix this, it's not because it benefits us in any way. Cause it really doesn't because null sec, we don't care about war decks. They're a fact of life. That happens all the time. I mean, I, we, we had a war deck against some random uh, fraternity related group the other day. And the I got, I got the lock a guy and start shooting at him in Jita before he flew, he flew off. And that was the, the, imp, the total impact of the war on me. And it just happened to be because I was in Jita. Well, all we don't care about they it. use, they use uh, all jump freighter pilots and all that stuff anyway. So, well, that's exactly if you're, if you're dumb enough not to have your jump freighter pilots and all corps anyway, come on. I mean, that's just, that's just how it is. That's the, that's the standard thing. So it's not like, you know, you war deck goons and you're going to catch their logistics. They're, they're not using goon ships for the logistics. Well, you, the, you, the you do. Is, it's, not, it's not about what null sec or what benefits us. It's about what benefits the game. And that is fixing this problem before we lose any more players to it. Period. Yeah, I mean, you do catch the, um, the once in a while... Uh, person that you know, that isn't paying attention but yeah for the most part it's i doubt they they catch a lot so i don't really know because uh how, how much is a war deck each month I, i've never been in a war decking corp or an alliance but isn't it like half a billion a month or something like that or does it go up and down based on how many members the uh, 
the target group is? It it it, it, it no, goes up and down based on the target. Okay. Uh, on how much how big the target is. Because like uh, th- those Wardek groups that just constantly Wardek the big alliances, like they're spending a bunch of money. And I, I I can't imagine they're catching anywhere near that much stuff. So I, I'm not sure what the what the goal of that is. Maybe they're looking for like that pinata thing that comes by once in a while, but. Everybody tries to you, you 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 might you know run into somebody with a Sharon or somebody who's being dumb, um, and and uh, yeah. you hope you can do that, but usually not. Yeah, but like the basically the the war decks against the null groups are not a big deal. It's the it's the war decks versus uh, the other groups like uh, the people that live in high sec, the smaller groups, the mining groups, stuff like that. That's probably causing all the issues. Right. Man, who you know what? Who is that motherfucking Eptis guy? Does literally anybody know who that motherfucking Eptis guy he, was that you I fucking from banned earlier? <laughs> he he was like, on I, a... Like, I haven't like, blocked. I can't even see what well, he's doing. Hold on. I know. Uh, hold on. That's the, that's the guy and who's, like, wanted, super spiteful. He wanted to know, like, way back in, like, you know, the earlier part before he got fucking, like, you know, what we on this show call permabanned, okay, not like, you know, what, like, CCP calls permabanned or whatever, like, yeah. wanted to know why you had him muted or whatever, and then I'm like, dude, your your issue should not be mute right now. It, so, you, if he's talking to you, if, if he's still listening, like, the reason is, I, I don't remember like, if it was last week or the week before, but there was a week was, where he was in the chat, we're totally he was attacking fine. Attacking people, yeah. We're, yeah, yeah. So no, totally, he was. He got he got like a little fucking attacky, didn't he? Well, well, the, like we're totally fine if you don't agree with what you're saying. You can be like, "Hey, this is dumb," or but when you just he was nonstop, almost literally spamming the chat with, "This is stupid. You're all the fucking joke." It's like and like fuck you. You're a fuck. It's like it's like okay if you're actually personally attacking people, and yeah, if you just do it once, like, whatever. But if you're doing it like he, every he, minute. He, like, for like you half know, an hour, you gotta go. I, I'm actually, I'm actually gonna read this because you know what? I believe that in this day and age, transparency is where we need yeah, to be. Go ahead. Go okay. Ahead. He's like, he's like, ask why I was muted, and my response was, seems you actually got banned. And I was going to ask you what you were talking about, but I think I also recall some excessive shit talking last week, and you know, you know, and or on another show. So I think there may be some pent up short leash that came into play. The back Matt office says, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Let me get through this, and you can like. Oh, go well, through. stop but, getting some nobody attention. The Mac class oh, says he's being abusive oh, to crafty people. Why do no, we have to give I'm him attention? I'm trying to use it as a teachable moment. Back okay. office seems to have remembered you, but it wasn't a mute. This was a ban. He's like, good to see this is actually open comms. I said, well, we could lawyer that, but not tonight. Now it's closed. Inn. He's like, you agreed with me last week. I remember all of you currently, and I will overtake you all. So remember when I call you all, capital letters. This guy's a fucking Trump guy. I know he's. Capital letters jokes. Yeah, yeah. And he it's was. Like, but I'm trying to figure the fuck out. It's like he he was just a normal <laughs> re re that kind of fucking got a little re one night, but now we're like short tempered on well, re. Well, no, no, he got re re, no, and I timed him out, people. and I was like, then he came back, he got re re again, and I timed him out, and then I told him in a private whisper in Twitch, like, hey, I'm just giving you a timeout, but calm it down. And you're good. I'm not banning you. And then he came back tonight and did the exact same. It's like this is okay. like he's doing the same thing wanna, over and over sure. after being warned multiple times. I'm like, can all right, fuck say, off, and I just banned. Can him. we please say? Can we please, can we please say that this show is literally is literally the fucking lightest of all INN shows for people just saying shit out there. Like we really are because number one, we say it our fucking selves and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Don't be worse than us. That's got to be the fucking rule. <laughs> Basically, I mean, it's just we found be the one. Rule, we right? found I mean, one. Like, and we like, had to snuff it out. <laughs> anyways, but you know what? I hope he doesn't fucking like you know like DM me or whisper or whatever the fuck that is that goes on in you youngins you, like no, you know you thing that I'm him. seeing here. That's what I did. He's like, oh, no, I'm not gonna do that. Like, I don't block fuck. people. I don't block people because I want to read their shit. Like, no, later. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't spend my time giving garbage attention. So uh, that's I like, why I block I like them. the McCloud. You will regret the day you messed with the Eptis. <laughs> my God, oh my <laughs> the dude was like a complete cunt. Like, I don't know why people are giving him. Basically, attention. Jesus. I will show you my hands in the face. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All that. All that being said, we are we are going to move on look, look there's a part of me that wants to do the economy section because i used to always love the economy session okay this year so highly motherfucking disappointed in the economy session highly disappointed because even Aerith doesn't sound like he's fucking talking economy in here and i'm going to tell you right now 
CCP doesn't have people who can talk about the fucking economy. This here was basically a bunch of lightweight shit that they put under a broader umbrella of the economy without actually talking about the economy. What and exactly did you want that. us to talk about there? I want you to talk about the economy. I want you to talk like, about like, the economy. Like when people actually go into, I don't know, super carriers and carriers and what that actually means for NullSec and, you know, all of this stuff. When they go into the, like, me, talk about what it means, not just for an economy in a certain area. Talk about what it means for the broader economy. Talk about maybe it might be out of whack. Talk about maybe how it's totally in whack. Like apparently the mineral prices are, except for like, I don't know, things that like, it doesn't actually show what you talked about in here. Like, honestly, does CCP actually have a... I love Larrikin. I do. Yes, Larrikin okay, last, can do all Last that I knew, he was a Capital Pilot uh, developer up there and things yep. like that. Do they Larrikin actually have a grasp quant. on the economy? Or is it just one yes, of those things Larrikin, where... Larrikin, yes, yes. Larrikin has, is a new quant. He knows his stuff. He's new He knows all this stuff as well as anybody else. He is a new quant, yes. Now, quant was a data scientist that just put out stuff like the Merck. Now, I know that he was more than that at the at the uh, uh, upper level for the company, okay? Not necessarily for the game, okay? Quant wasn't somebody that actually got out there and talked about things related to the, the economy as well. He was just somebody who threw data out there and said, hey, you guys, you guys think about it. I'm not going to write up anything about this. I'm not going to actually talk about anything like this. I'm not going to have a presentation at FanFest, you know, that isn't anything more than just showing you guys graph porn. Is there actual thought that goes into the underlying eve economy when they sit there and go hey guess what fucking super capital is rat really fucking hard as you saw in the comments i specific as you saw in the comments i specifically said that i said specifically do you think that the amount of isk entering the game right now is sustainable larrikin said in no uncertain terms, no. So that tells me what we need to do, at least in the, in the near future, or at least we got to start talking about it, is how do we either introduce more ISK things to take some of this ISK out of the economy, or how do we slow the velocity of ISK entering the economy? The fact is, super ratting is too, is too ISK efficient. It's too good. And there's too much money entering the game. And it's going to it's going to cause problems all the t- all over the place, and it already has. We've seen massive inflation over the last ten years, uh, you know. So we're going to have to do something. You haven't about seen it. massive the inflation. Is, Hold on a second. All right. Uh, and, Two thousand five. And people talk about that. You, how much? You haven't. How much, you how haven't much seen massive inflation. In okay. Flex? Because right. if the way you have things dialed in terms of the is that comes into the game, as well as the resources that come into the game, you can actually cr- control for the level of, uh, of inflation. However, you have. A number of things came in here, okay, that they also came in in, say, the ship balancing section, okay, where they're talking about titans and things like that, where you can actually tie back the level of, uh, well, you can actually connect them. I don't want to say tie back. You can actually connect kind of the actual level of wealth that that comes into the game, the actual level of is that comes into the game, the actual level of resources that come into the game, and then out there into the proliferation of Titans, the proliferation of other ships that end up with where we are with Titans online now. No connection like that is made anywhere in here or even discussed to, to rebuke it. And I'm trying to figure out whether or not that level of economic kind of thought is put into how they're developing the game whereas in the past there was kind of more of that going on so that that was yeah that was that was a big thing and i'm sorry i'm i just joined thank you drayden you're so in my wheelhouse i gotta say something my name's on dollar pox i'm from karma fleet it's pretty cool but um i would say with the super adding i mean the number of people that are actually doing it versus the people that are, you know, actually playing the game, I don't know the exact numbers, but I would say the people that are super adding is probably a very small uh, group of the population. Um, now, <clears throat> groups like Goon Sword Federation have a very high um, concentration of those kind of people. I mean, you know, we have the Delve Time unit. We talk about it all the time um, about, you know, how many Titans per hour we're actually able to produce, but really it's like, I mean, how much does that really affect the whole game? 
I mean, it's like, yeah, it, it affects uh, a couple of Sov holding entities that are kind of uh, at each other's throats. But, I mean, I don't know. I, from what I've seen, the you know, supers are dying on a much more regular basis than they used to. Um, I mean, there are some groups that are making a lot more risk than they used to. But uh, when it comes to actual inflation, I mean, you ha you kind of have to almost look like at a uh, at a basket of goods. You know, um, what your average person is, is using in the game versus, uh, you know, like what are people that are really a very small group of people compared to everybody that plays EVE. Um, you know, you have to look at that bas basket of goods and it's, it's inflation versus, um, you know, like things like Super and Titan Halls and that kind of thing. Well, I mean, you got think about it this way. I would, I would look at it from the flex standpoint. And if you're, if you're, if you're trying to convert, uh, trying to convert the amount of, of, of ISK into Plex and how much game time that buys. In 2005, five billion in ISK was enough to buy something like 30 months worth of game time. And then five or six years later, it was enough to buy 10 months of game time. Now it buys you two months of game time. So as 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 you see that that's where the inflation I think is 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 in the value of the plex and how how that translates because that's usually the easiest way we look at it. But in terms of of velocity of isk and super ratting and things like that, if you look at the at the at the just the NPC bounties by region, the number one region is dealt, and you got a lot of folks that are in VNIs, yes, but you got a lot of folks in supers, a lot of folks in carriers because those are the isk efficient ways of doing it. And you know I know at least a lot of the nullsec blocks. It's it's relatively easy to get a super for ratting. It's relatively easy to find safe space where you're not harassed, or at least uh, you can find areas where you can do it. So, you know, I think it may not be, you know, more than 1% of the population, 2% of the population doing it, but they're able to do it at such a, a more uh, efficient way than anybody else that, it's, that, that you're seeing the $7.5 trillion in ISK generated in a month uh, through ratting bounties in Delver or, or, you know, you know, uh, Declan or, or wherever, uh, it, it's, it's not, it's, it's just not sustainable. So I think at some point we've got to figure out how we're going to stop that. Cause if we don't do that, I think that's going to have impacts, long-term impacts on the health of the game. Well, and, and the other thing is that, um, with the, when you, when you mentioned that the supers were dying, uh, pretty quickly as well, that's actually not sinking any money out of the game. So that's not necessarily helping the economy because those are basically being provided by resources harvested and then those, uh, you know, now uh, I don't know the numbers when you said the, uh, the amount of is coming in, like the is faucet from these supers compared to the faucets coming in from other sources in the game. I don't know what the ratio of that is and how much it's affecting the actual economy, but when the, the supers dying, isn't necessarily draining money out of the economy at all, really. Well, I mean, that's, that's good. I have no, no problems at all with the number of supers dying. In fact, I want to make, I want to see more supers die. I want to see more Titans die. Everybody, everybody says that. Okay. Everybody says that. And that would be absolutely motherfucking outstanding. Okay. If the economics of the game actually did that. Okay. And I know that they do. And I, and here's the problem I have, right? As being part of the Imperium and knowing what the, what the economic output of that is down there and all that. It's like, I know that there are some groups that can actually just like at this point, at this point, we have gone beyond suicide titans and suicide apo uh, apostles and into su uh, uh, suicide dreads and suicide apostles into suicide titans and suicide super carriers. Like, that's where that shit has gone down there. And I'm going to tell you, it's the same thing that's I say inevitable. out in the talking that's in inevitable. stations. Hold on. It's the same thing I say in the talking in stations minutes. There is something fundamentally fucked up with your game if your players have anything that's called suicide and it is like at the upper echelon of of the like hardware in your game right. but, but there's something you, fundamentally messed oh, up but i but Dirk, I, it's, it's I just want to i just want to get back to the idea of the is there is anybody at ccp that fundamentally understands the interconnections of the economy in this game and how it like you know relates but but you got to remember Dirk, that uh i think i mean i'm not 100 percent on these on these uh these numbers, but I'm pretty sure that most people in the game play in high sec. Like if you just got people that are no, just, no, you know, they got that's their regular the case, subscription and stuff, right? So everything that we're talking about with supers and titans, it almost doesn't affect their gameplay. Now I'm not saying it doesn't at all because you know we're talking about like its generation through bounties and that kind of thing. And so, that, <clears throat> excuse me, 
that definitely um, impacts the whole game. But what I mean is that, like, the actual gameplay on the ground, it really doesn't affect those people's uh, gameplay that's that's in high sec. Really, um, we're talking about, like, kind of a multi-tiered situation here where we got people, most of the people that play the game, they're pretty casual. You know, they come in, they do some missions, maybe they talk to a few people or whatever. Um, but that is, it's it's almost a, a totally different experience. Now, When we're if we're talking about, you know, like, ISK to Plex, you know, that does kind of um, skew things. But, uh, I mean, for those people, you know, if they're just, if they're just bringing in 20 bucks into the game and they're buying a bunch of it, you know, they're getting Plex, uh, you know, Plex prices are being pushed up because of what people are able to do out in, out in LSEC for, um, you know, like a super um, productivity and stuff. That's actually a net gain for them. They're getting more ISK for each Plex that they turn in. So, uh, I mean, you know, my question, it's, it's actually my good question is, re- you know, is really oh. kind of basic. Even, even though I throw a couple of things out there that, that end up being really, this is not Imperium bashing. This is not fucking like, in, if anything, it is showing how the shit can be taken to an extreme that might actually be a breaking kind of extreme, which is why you would want people who understand kind of the interrelationships of a game that you want to go on for longer than the next 18 months, like a Ubisoft game or something like that, right. to be able to have an understanding of it, right? It's, it's, but, it's, but why, look, it's, I, it's why those games don't have actual economies. This one does. Does anybody well, there actually fucking well, understand it? Dirk, yes, obviously. I mean, the, they couldn't be making a game if they didn't have folks on staff that weren't, that didn't have... Not know, true, not folks. true, not true, not true, not true, not true. Okay. So what are you because, asking the question for if you don't want the answer? Well, I'm at... Hold on. Because you can't give me an answer like, well, they couldn't make the game if they didn't know. Of course they could. They have people on staff who do economics. I have talked to those guys. The names escape me off the top of my head. But CCP Nogwell's gone. He was the guy that, like, at least had kind of a strategic kind of view of how these things. I don't. I'm not trying to fucking call out. Well, I am in a way because I think that this is one of the underlying core. There are certain foundational elements of this quote unquote game. Okay. One of which being the economy, right? That I think they need to have a firm fucking grasp on. They let these things break in a way. You can put ships out there all day. You can put minerals out there all day. You can put ISK out there all day. You can make players happy with the accumulation of more. There's probably game psychology that comes into that thing. But does somebody there have a fucking eye on, you know, game balance well, and I that, that goes question, beyond ship balance? And I said yes. Right. So there's and your I, answer. Okay. Yes. Yeah, and I'll tell you, Dirk. Risk is like, well, I'll tell you, you know, Quant came out. He's got, you know, all of his charts and all of his statistics and that kind of stuff. I mean, what do you say? There's like 11 to I, I can't remember the actual number, but it's like 11 to 15 times somewhere in there of assets that are actually in the game that there isn't enough to isk to actually purchase all those things. You know, people would have to barter with, you know, probably more than like 90 percent of the stuff in the game to actually be able to to go back and forth with it so really i don't think isk is the issue um a lot of the stuff that happens in the economy it's all about utility and a lot of that starts to be apparent when you're fighting these big wars you know i mean all the isk in the world ain't, ain't no good if you can't get the the goods where you need them you know and I, I mean, if you have all the ISK on the planet, but you can't logistically, you know, get things where they need to be, um, the ISK doesn't doesn't matter. I think what you what you you know, I think you think that the the economics, excuse me, and and what is uh, being generated, you know, in null sec versus what's what's happening in high sec and that kind of thing is uh, is a bigger problem than it actually is. Really, a lot of this stuff shakes out because um, you know people have whatever whatever uh, what I want to say. Um, they have whatever currency or, you know, like available to them, you know, the people in high sec, they have their is the people on no sec, they have their is. But really, at the end of the day, if people aren't getting things where they need to be and none of it matters. It's just like a real economy. You know, you can have as many, you know, like Venezuelan uh, Bolaros that you want. But if you can't get food, it don't matter. But the thing is, they can. And that's 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 part of the issue. It's, it's when you're looking at the- if you look at, 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 you're absolutely right in terms of where, you know, the vast majority of players are. The vast majority of players are in high sec. That's not where the vast amount of, of wealth generation is. The vast amount of wealth generation is has been and always will be in null sec. 
I mean, you yes. look at the numbers. Look Always. at Dell. Seven, July. I've had the number. I have the July numbers up in front of me. That's right? fine. There are more recent ones, but I'm looking at July. That's pre-war, so just keep that in mind. Or at least it's a, kind of in the middle of a war, so they're not as high as they could be. But Dell, seven point five trillion. Cobalt Edge, two point one trillion. Branch, four point two trillion. The Torrid, three point three trillion. Fountain. So our renters, two point eight trillion. Even even Geminate, you know, which is like horde farming territory. We go to kill their rock walls. One point eight trillion. Then you look at the Citadel. Seven hundred and twenty-five billion. Oh, oh, hold, on Ford, hold on, five hundred and thirty-one billion. You're not making the money in, in high tech. And the, the other only, thing is the, the only thing that changed. The only the thing same. that changed anytime recently, okay, is the level that Delve is relative to other nullsec. Not what nullsec has always been, okay, relative to other parts of you know at least case space. I'm not. I'm not arguing in terms of whether it's Delve only or whatever. I'm simply saying that in terms of where the ISC is being generated, it's being generated in in uh, in in Nullsec. And if you look at the terms in terms of resources, now granted, in terms of, of production value, the Forge is always is is close to or at the same level as Delve uh, all the time. But Delve's getting close, and in some months it overtakes the Forge, some months it doesn't overtake the Forge. So production is happening in high sec. It's also happening in a lot of places in Nullsec. And frankly, the moon changes have made it. Very, very lucrative, very, very, uh, very, very uh, attractive for production to be done in the area where the mining is done because yeah. it's a pain in the ass to move stuff to high sec uh, if you don't if you're not using compressed ores and moon goo you can't compress it so you really have to refine it where it is. So the the reality is that's where what, what we're seeing is a lot of this production is getting devolved out in the null sec which is where it's supposed to be. So that so that so the concern that you have with I have a lot of if, but what can I buy with it? It's not as big a deal as it used to be because the production is being is being taken away from the the empire hubs that it was it was traditionally in before. And one DQ market has pricing that is is as good or better than Jita half the time. It's yeah. definitely better than Do Dixie. It's better than Amar. So you know there are a lot of times where you don't have to go anywhere. And if you're a goon, you're in, you're you're happy because you've got a better market than anybody else in the game. Sure. So okay. I think that the problem really has to be we have to look at in terms of these things that keep going up and up and up and up and up. Is that sustainable? And I don't think it is. So I think we're going to have to have to have a hard look at the economy. And yes, we did not do that this time. There, I For, agree 100 percent. We had other things hold, on the priority hold, hold, list. Just hold it on has one second. to be something that happens. Soon. Hold on one second. I'm not talking about things that go up and up and up. Okay, I'm not talking about whether or not the CPI or any of those metrics, okay, go a certain way. I'm talking about understanding the interrelationships between, let's say, okay, uh, super capital proliferation and Rorqual mining. Is there an economic understanding about how this freaking happens? Is there an economic understanding about the interplay between moon mining Okay, and tech two production for uh, I don't know capital guns on Titans right. or dreadnoughts. Right, and I'm I, I I get what you're putting down, Nurk. I mean, it's like really, you know, is this good? You know, what is it basically balanced for the whole game? It's like what we've set up at least in the Imperium is now that we have we basically have what's called you know like an umbrella it's basically you know um it's not really that our people are paying protection but it's like you know we do play pay taxes to, to you know make sure that everything works and you know we got our srp we got you know uh all those programs um that kind of go around and around but it's like basically it's kind of like um i guess it would be a more of an organizational race than like an arms race it's like if there is another group that's either far enough away from us to where the umbrella doesn't matter or um, another group is able to set up an umbrella for their own, you know, group as well. Um, those are going to be the people that um, are going to be able to have the uh, the security for most of their line members to go out there and make money, right? If you don't have an umbrella at this point, um, I mean that that is the that is the tech du jour, right? That is that is the the if you have an umbrella. Okay. What was the a, question uh, Dirk asked again? Yeah. Was it well, about uh, super uh, capital uh, proliferation uh, and uh, 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 uh. it doesn't minerals? it doesn't matter because my my question was semi rhetorical just in terms of you know okay. j just sort of back to I really do hope CCP has somebody there. I love Larrikin, motherfucking right. dude, good Aussie fucking guy. Okay. 
I just don't know that they've got somebody there who is actually looking over kind of the well-being of this thing that underpins these other things, but is also interconnected. Uh, but I do want to move on because I do, I don't want to get too deep into this, okay? But I do have a question from a clarification standpoint that only Brisk can answer. Um, uh, this is a, uh, a sentence from the minutes. Some skill farm discussion came up. And the CSM were interested in seeing some stats and the effects, but those numbers aren't available. CCP at Larrikin wants to investigate this further, however. What was some skill farm discussion? If I recall correctly, I think it was a, a, a discussion that we had regarding... I, 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 I'm being fuzzy on I can't remember if it was if the number of skill farms or how many skill farms there were or if, or if it was a question of the new, uh, the new player uh, re retention rewards, whether that had an impact on skill farm, uh, the sizes or anything like that. I can't remember off the top of my head what it was, but it was just. A, I remember somebody asked about it, and we asked if we had any data. They had any data, and they didn't have any. Um, and so we, we kind of left it by the wayside. I think that's what that was, but I can't remember off the top of my head. It, it wasn't anything deeper than that, though. I mean, like, it wasn't like, I don't, you know. I don't think it was anything like, how the fuck skill farms working out anything? for you guys? No, I don't think so. Okay. That, that was my only question regarding that, and I do not want to get into a fucking super deep ass, uh, you know, skill farm discussion here. But anyways, okay, so we are going to, uh, we are going to move on, in fact, because we are like, we're burning the shit at a time. I told people that, that fuck live events, don't give a shit. <laughs> New player experience sat there and said earlier that as much as that is a annual live topic, events we're not going to fucking ones. do it. Customer support team policies. We hacked this shit out, I think, two weeks ago. Um, we saw the results of that, yeah. Which basically we saw the results of that. Hey, don't harass people. Don't be a racist. Don't be a sexist. Don't threaten to cut anybody's body parts off. Or like, you know, do shit like that. We saw the results of that, so we can actually move on from that as well. Um, briefly, briefly, because this is one of the top four topics that the CSM were willing to bring there, you know, and, and, and great on you for it. Uh, apparently, server performance has been an issue. This actually came up in the section called server performance and tech issues. However, there was really nothing there other than, holy shit, like server performance things and clients disconnecting and stuff like that happened but then it came up in a couple sections later a section called sov and fleet warfare that section called sovereignty and fleet warfare was entirely dedicated to server performance or client disconnects or things like that so there are actually two two sections out there that deal with this do you guys felt as though and i'm totally freaking boiling this down you guys felt as though you came away with um, anything related to what we experienced over the course of the last three, four months in terms of server performance, client disconnects, all that kind of shit that you feel as though they've got a handle on it, or are they still trying to find what the ultimate culprits are? I think that they are doing their best to track down the bugs and work everything out. And I think our, our biggest goal was to, to impress upon them that this the server and client performance issues particularly in the big fleet fights uh need to get addressed because there is nothing that has, is more frustrating and more likely to to kill the you know the the the, the, the momentum that we had in nullsec uh than if they do not get this stuff under control because it's not fun and if people are constantly getting disconnected we're getting stuck with stock it closes and random things are happening that can't be predicted that can't be factored into uh, an FC's plan for these big fleet fights, then it, 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 it deters them. And that's not good. We want to see these big fights. That this is, this is for a lot of people, this is end game content. And Eve is being in a Titan in one of these big fleet fights and getting to see other Titans die. And if doing that is not only, you know, a pain in the ass because of the tie dye, which I'm fine with, but it's a pain in the ass because the login server is busted or the node crashes or something crazy happens and I have a ghost character that's floating in space. That's alive but dead but not really alive you know it's it's just it's 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 not fun and it, and it deters these fights and i think you know if you look some of the some of the lead fcs in the game are not playing it i mean doom chinchel is a perfect example he he flat out went nuts because 
they were losing fights or having trouble in fights because the server was getting wacky. And he didn't feel like CCP was uh, adequately addressing the issues. And, and now he's, he's, he's kind of stopped really playing a lot to the point that I know he uninstalled the game. So we don't want to see that happen. You don't they, know that, they know that they need to fix this stuff. Huh? You don't know that he's uninstalled the game. He said he just reinstalled it a couple days ago. So I'm okay. assuming that means that he had to uninstall it. Or maybe he never stuff. uninstalled it, but now he's just saying he reinstalled it. It's Doom. Maybe like, he did. You, you know, can't it's go doomed. by like, everything he says. It's Doom. I, I, you're right. It is so doomed. I'm just taking him at face value. But the point is, is that the server should you never... You just did a complete reinstall, but like blamed it on that. <laughs> right. But the bottom line is the server... CCP does not want the server to be a third party in all of these fights. They don't want to fight the server and each other. They want they want the server to work well. So that means they know they got stuff they got to fix, and they're trying to do the best that they can. They 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 told us they identified a number of bugs and they're working on things. Uh, I, I mean, I can't get into a lot of detail other than to say that they know it's an issue and they're working on it. And I'm confident that you know between that and they announced you know Falcon had a blog a couple months ago where he talked about all the new you know, server equipment they were going to be testing, new blades from IBM and stuff like that. So I'm looking forward to them getting the 64-bit stuff done as well, because I think that'll have an impact. But in the long run, they know they got to do this, and they're committed to doing it, and they're putting a lot of money in to, to hardware to make sure that the game can run the way it's supposed to run. But the one thing we do well as EVE players is if they get the server stable at 4,000 players, we're going to bring five. If they get the server stable at 5,000 players, we're going to bring six. And they're just we're just going to keep pushing the edge, and that's good. But you know, they know they need to do it. Hold on. Yes, fucking Opus. I got to look at my goddamn keyboard to, uh, to type because I'm not a goddamn woman. I didn't learn how to fucking, like, you know, type, uh, you know, back in high school. It's called being like a that. millennial, not a woman. Whatever. Yeah, whatever hey. it is, okay? That being said, um, we're going to move on to, I, cause I think we just answered that last thing. Oh, my God. It is so fucking big. This is the, th this may be Let's the biggest hit thing. Shipping module bounce. Oh, that's nothing. That's we said. talked about that. I said, let's hit it. And I said, that's nothing. We already fucking talked let's about Let's hit that. it. We already Go talked ahead. about this, Dirk. What do you want to talk? Okay, what do you want to talk about? Shipping module session? balance. You won't, you won't really made me laugh at this. Part of what made me laugh at the economy, and I'm not going to go fucking back to that, but capitals. Capitals, you know what? We got a fucking narrow bunch of shit here that, like, you know, oh, man, you know what? If it wasn't for the fact that, like, nine million titans existed out there and, like, you know, titans were being used, like, frontline ships... Um, let's see here. Hold on. Long range Titan guns are incredibly strong, even against relatively small ships. Yep. Like, why is the biggest ship in the game killing a freight? They are. Why? Short drag is a screwball and kill a bee presented a list the, of issues that were developed by Titan in six months. That were developed by, your hoss. by fleet commanders that they wanted to see addressed, including issues with Titan EHP, Roquel balance, and Citadel mechanics. Uh, is that really like like when you guys went there? Like, were any of you thinking the concept in your head, Titans Online? Like, and you sat there and went, but you know what? Those long range guns, man. <laughs> Those long range guns. It just look. Here's here's how these things Haas, work. No, Each of us have a list of stuff we want to talk about, and that just happened to be the first thing out of Sword Dragon's mouth because he had a list of stuff. No, no, he no, and on. me, it wasn't just Sort him. and me and B sat down with all the FCs like the week before and got a list of stuff that they wanted us to talk about. And there's a bunch of stuff on there. And one of those was Titan guns. And, you know, should we take Haws off Titans and only make Haws available for Dreads so the Dreads have a, a niche thing that they're good at besides dying? Something like that. And that was, that was the genesis of that conversation. You're in the Imperium. You're in the Imperium. Yeah. Do you not, do you, or do you not think that, uh, I don't know, fucking hundreds of Titans under anybody's control out there, including like your own from a coalition standpoint, is not a little bit fucking crazy when they are literally the concrete ceiling of this game? Dirk, it's a, it's, it's, it's going to happen. The game's 15 years old. I get that. And but but we so, want this so, to be... Hold on, hold on. Hilmar wants this to be, you know, the next fucking 30 years kind of shit. Or, or I should say the third decade or whatever. Well, he's already sold, so he. Does, I don't think he really cares at this point. 
I'm just trying to find out if whether or not we think that, you know what, some things just need tweaks and other things are like, damn, your shit, like, back in the fucking day didn't pan the fuck out, and now we're just trying to, like, compensate for it. Look, Dirk, it's it's like a nuclear weapon, okay? Back in the day, only we had them. And then it's only us in Russia. And now everybody and their mother has has a nuke. It's not as big a deal as it used to be. And the same thing with Titans. It's not as big a deal as it used to be. Now, well, people, people, Kim Jong-un and I have had love nukes. letters. We want oh, no, people to use their guy. titans. Right. People do use their titans. But look, the bottom line, and I think, is the proliferation is an issue. I'm not going to argue that it's not, just like nuclear proliferation is an issue. The difference is, is that I don't want people using nukes, but I want people using titans, and I want them to die. So my philosophy about this has been, and I think Sort and I agree on it, is that we want to see more stuff blow up, which means we got to look at what what causes Titans to blow up and what can we do to make that easier. And some of the things we said was, well, let's reduce the EHP on Titans. Let's reduce facts. Let's, let's make facts reps not as big a deal so that we see Have more we of these things the die. Rubicon? Have we crossed the Rubicon where now it is only about how do we make these things die as opposed to, like, how do we ever get back to the idea of once upon a time, strategic assets. Dirk, we already talked about that. If you want more Titans to die, bottle, right. oh, all right. you if fix you the servers so the servers don't crash when you're killing Titans. That's all you Correct. gotta do. Well, That's no, all you gotta no, do. We've no, because, seen because UALX then, and all these because, other fights. Because then it's so not just about server titans, issues. It's all about fax issues no, as well, which we'll get to. Those, it, but you, it, true, you also need to have issues. reasons to fight and but to bring them out. But when your server node crashes, you can't Correct. really kill the Titan. That's that, and that's and that's it. And the last fight, we killed twenty some titans to their one. Are they going to take another fight like that again? No, because they they got their butts kicked, and that was because of the server. And that sucks because that that drives me crazy. Is when that when the server steps in and makes problems that we could otherwise you know make fun. Uh, it, it, it's an issue. But the fact is, I want more titans to die. How is that going to happen? Well, we got to make them squishier. How do you do that? Well, you got to either lower the EHP. Or you got to lower the, the the meat shield screen of faxes that are surrounding these things. I mean, every every single alliance that I know of in Nullsec, if you're a Titan, if you have a Titan a Titan pilot and you're flying the Titan, you better damn sight have at least one fax hole. I've got two, so you know that's just how it is. So we got to find a way to kill these faxes faster, and I want to do that. I think that's one thing. And then if you do that and you, you make it easier to kill the Titans, we have more Titans. I, I mean, you want you want to do that? You want? Let's I want skip, everything. To let's die. skip forward to fax and repping. Go ahead. Talk about faxes. What's no, the problem I, with look, the faxes? bottom line? Faxes in general, in wormholes, are overpowered. In against subcaps, are overpowered, and they are meat shields that that are, are just throwaways in in these big fleet fights. So I think they need to be balanced so that they're not as overpowering uh, in the subcap arena as they are, and that we need to definitely need to help our wormhole buddies out by fixing it in there because it's a big issue for them. And the fact is, when you got a, we got one capital ship like a, an Apostle, if it's fitted properly and flown by somebody that has at least a, a general idea of what they're doing, it's going to take two or three hundred subcaps to blow it up. Now, maybe that's me being exaggerating for the sake of exaggeration. Maybe it's only 150. Maybe because it's only that, was, that was but one of the earlier things, right? That was one of the that was problem. one of the earlier considerations in that meeting, at least you know, at least according to the minutes, was. The discrepancy between subcaps and caps, which I am going to assume also meant super caps. Okay. Yes. However, you get down here into the actual facts section of things, and they talk about Titan survivability is discussed. CCB Fozzie mentions that one potential option to increase the ability to kill ships under facts reps would be to add a small remote rep impotence attribute to whatever ship classes are most causing the problems. This is actually kind of an interesting, you know, you know, an interesting concept to all this. But like, again, there we're talking about Titans. They're not talking about whether or not, uh, you know, uh, faxes should be able to rep at the same goddamn scale on subcaps and all that kind of shit. They're not talking. And I do actually come back to the whole idea of the interrelationship between nobody gives a shit about a fax anymore. They will literally throw that into anything because the economics of it all don't fucking matter. Well, I mean, they they do matter, but we've gotten to the point where um, for the larger groups, you know, they're not able to or they're able to pump out enough um, T1 stuff to make them pretty much pretty pretty cheap 
Yeah, and I, and I agree with that 100. percent I mean, look, regardless of what programming risk these guys want to say, faxes for big null sec uh, blocks are are disposable assets. I've got six. You know, just in case one of them dies, I've got other ones that I can hop back into and go out there. And we expect that. You can get it. You can get an off the rack fax for two or three billion. That's not a lot of risk in the overall scheme of things. It's the same as dreads. A dread bomb is designed to die. But you hope that you take the Titan out with it or the, or the super out with it. That's how you, that's how you win the US war. So these are disposable assets now. They're capital ships, but they're disposable assets. That's fine. But the fact is, I don't think, and I know ProGod disagrees and other people disagree, they seem to think that as long as something is dying, it's a, it's a fun fight. I don't agree with that. If I'm going to kill a Titan and all I kill is 15 faxes, I did not do what I set out to do. And I'm not going to be happy with that, even if I win the ISK war. Because one Titan is 80 billion and 15 faxes is 15 billion, you know, or, or 30 or 40 billion. I don't, I can't even do the math. I'm, I'm not a math guy. But regardless, it's half of what, what, what I would have got with a Titan. And it's just not, it's not, that's not what I'm doing. That's not what, I, that's not, that's not what's fun. And it doesn't help with the super cap proliferation either. So I don't want these fights where, you know, you can jump in 20 faxes and save the Titan um, because that's what faxes are designed to die. They're just supposed to meet shield. So that's not, that's not fun. And I think that meta needs to change. And part of the way we, we do that is by, you know, making them yet less useful so that it's less likely that you're just going to end plus one the problem. But that's, that's hard because the typical solution to any of these things is, well, we'll just bring more. Okay, well, that, that works for some people, but not everybody can do that. Well, the, the other thing with the, with the supers is like lately – there's been a lot more fights with all these super, you know, like people have been dropping like their Titans and super blobs and stuff like to deal with the Citadels. But with the whole, I, mean, I know that we're not getting into the tethering bullshit right now, but it seems like when these big super fights that. have been happening, there hasn't been as many supers and Titans dying that you would think should. It's like, you know, some of those big fights, like, oh man, big Titan blobs got dropped. They were fighting each other. And like two Titans died in a, in a two or two or three supers. And it's like, really? That's it? That's all it died? Well, some t- some, that, that's the thing. There, so these ships are sometimes very easy to, they can find easy ways to get extracted. And other times you have enough folks where you can jump in to deter somebody from trying to stay on grid, keep the fight. So it depends. And then, uh, of course, you got the server problems. You know, it, it's like Rain said, you know, if, if, you're, if you're trying to kill Titans and you're, you're there and the server crashes, well, you're not killing any more Titans. You know, uh, that's, that's the nature of the beast. So I, I think I would like to see, and I know this we had a lot of other stuff on our plate this time around, but there needs to be, I think, a, a more in-depth look at capitals and subcapitals and the various roles that they're supposed to play Dirk. in the game. And, and start doing the balance. What, are we are we taking a shot now? He's taking that. shots without Drayden and I. You know what? He's not calling him. You, you just got to be now. ready to go. That's all I got to say. I, I, right. I have to say I've done but, a couple just on, on the, on the it, fly. But. Exactly. Sometimes you just got to go on the fly. It just happens. You don't even have a shot, right? right? You got one left? I do. That was my last one. That was right. the last of it. And King Aries has a good point. The other thing that's different. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Because he said a bunch of things like out there powerful. tonight. Are you saying that now he has a good point? Go go with it. Quote it. right. I, he just says skill injectors did this to us as well. It used to be special to have higher SP pilots. Wait a minute, hold, they hold, could field hold more on a higher second. Ships. That's not the case. You're anymore. saying that there are interrelationships between other aspects of the game that need to be considered. Rain, could you punch uh, Dirk in the balls for me, please? At Vegas, yeah. yeah she's gonna I just, I mean, punch game, him. He's going to be like, game. why? And you're going to be like, you and know I am why? Going to game. keep coming back to this when it actually fucking matters because throughout the entire 56 or whatever the hell it is pages Thanks, of what this it? of this thing, the interrelationships of each of these sections where those things come up, they don't come up. Almost as if nobody talked about it or they were NDA redacted, and I would like Dirk. to hear that they were NDA redacted, but I know they weren't. Dark it is it is a it is a truism that all of this stuff is interconnected. Everybody knows it's all interconnected, and it has impacts on all different types of stuff. You don't have to keep bringing it up. Oh, by I the do way, have to bring it up because none of you actually speak to it. Well, what are, what are we supposed to speak to? Yes, it's interconnected. Yes, this is an issue with the economy. Yes, this is an issue with skill injectors. Yes, it's an issue with, with, with skill farmers. Yes, it's an issue with with is generation and plex sales and everything else. We all know that. 
But, but the point is, is that right, we so need to, it, to so identify what, so, the, what so the high end stuff is. And it's a stipulated down. fact. I get it. Okay, fine. But I will say just real quick that uh, you know if they got rid of ghost ghost uh, training, that really trading SP for Plex is not a problem. I mean, it's just there. there's going to be some value on one side or the other, and if it's more advantageous for people to, to use their, their you know, uh, SP farms because there's Plex out there that's cheap, that's that's just, I mean, every time that happens, every time, you know, every month or 30 days or whatever that that goes around, that's taking Plex out of the system. So that's not a bad thing. And every time somebody buys a skill injector where they're only, you, you know, they're getting diminishing returns because they're already a high SP pilot, that's also, um, you know, that's just destroying value out of the system. And that's, that's good for the whole thing. All right. Nullification. We already talked about that. We talked about that. I think it was last week or... Fuck it. Who knows? Maybe the week before, except for the new news about uh, Calderis are finally getting fucking included and all that kind of shit. Do you guys want to talk about 500 MN warp drive Hicks? No, we no, no. We, we're not going to fucking do that because collateral <laughs> damage happens and people got to live with it. <laughs> Chain boofing, which I'm going to tell you right now, the new na- the new name for fucking boofing. Better be fucking boofing. I was, I was, gonna, I was uh, right actually now, asking if you meant all boofing. Need to but... fucking boof a flea. Why is it a boof, boof instead of a boosh? Boof, boof is now the fucking like lexicon out there. Boof is the fucking cool thing. So boosh is like old school. That's like the the Gen X shit going on. There. Boof is like what is now the kind of like you know modern day like you know. It's like don't say boosh. It's like yeah, I was gonna totally boof your ass. Oh man. Which I think is actually the real meaning, which is like actually oxymoronic about the whole. Is it an oxymoron to be Ironic, over Bush? Ironically oxymoronic about it all, right? Uh, no, no I, mean, I don't think I, so. Well, I, I don't, don't think that fits at all. Like, <laughs> I'm not, not, I'm not going to get all those words. Like, I actually went through this the other night with fucking McLeod. Okay, and it's like I have a real hard time arguing against chain bushing because the level of skill it fucking takes to pull off. I'm sorry. I'm not going to decry the level of skill it takes to fucking pull off. That's what I said. I mean, and the other thing I said, as you note in the, in the minutes, and I think it was funny because it, it wasn't exactly what I said. What I exactly said was, after we fixed literally everything else in the game, then we should fix chain boost. Until then, leave it alone. I know. Like, I know you, I, I know you so, saying that because so, you are so part good. of the initiative. <laughs> but, but I, like... That, that's, I was try, trying to put that out there as somebody, as somebody like TNT. I'm part of the tactical, tactical narcotics team. Okay. And it's like, we could not chain boost. <laughs> like we literally, <laughs> if we had everybody in fleet, that was a fucking command destroyer could not chain boost each other. <laughs> we did it the other day in BL. It actually takes like a lot of work, a lot of coordination, especially not only between the boosters, but as well as the fleet that you're booshing. I have I, no I, idea why people are too incompetent to counter that. Like, I, I, just, it's, problem. It's, it's, I just like the fact that... we counters uh, are because we can counter it when it's used against us when people try it. I mean, people like it's try the it. easiest and thing ever to counter. I, I just like the you fact know? that... Uh, I don't know which one was doing what. I, I think it was Big Choles. I think Big Choles was just randomly booshing Doom Bunny like by himself away from the fleet to troll his ass, which was, uh, which was pretty nice. I was... <laughs> I was watching that yesterday. I, mean, I, like, I, I have a tutorial video times. actually out on YouTube as well called How to Beat People Booshing You 101 and you lock them and you press the button called Scram in Correct. case you were too incompetent to realize that or you get six over six kilometers away from them. 6,000 kilometers. If you don't ask the ask six. actual question in this of like, should should command booshers ha- have ever existed in the game? Okay, it's like once once you acknowledge that they should have because of the player kind of, uh, you know, thing it creates. Um, player skill that creates chain boofing, 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 okay, uh, should always exist. Because that's what it fucking comes down to. I agree. Those people that are good at it, I'm sorry. I'm just sorry. Once you have allowed it into it, the I'm game at all... You. I agree with you. I think it's fine. Like I don't know why it, it it's a frustrating mechanic when it goes against you in, a, in an effective manner. But hey, that that's tactics now. I, I think the the whole boofing is um, I like it. Thank I, you, Drayden. Yeah, I you know, I'm on it. I, I'm catching on, dude. I'm I'm hip. I'm with it. 
<laughs> hey, look, look at my cohort. Number one ship, mages. There you go. Yeah. I would never he, do it. It's the same reason why I don't fly dictors because I just he's fly and die and don't even fucker, get one. He's out there so. being a fucking hey, beaver. Brick is, Brisk is a team player, and I know this. I'm good. We're good. Okay, so we're gonna we we're fun. gonna move on through whatever fucking trash talking was happening. We need so, to move oh, on. Uh, by to the way, let me throw this show. out there. Sort Dragon was supposed to be there, supposed to be here tonight, but he lost his voice. Okay, Sort is one of those people who like, it's like I love having on the fucking show because number one, he has an Australian accent and that like totally fucking works once in a while, not like a British accent does. But um, I thought it was British for a while. He, he he apparently lost his voice for some reason. I think he was like you know yelling at his wife or like you know like somebody outside his window or whatever. Anyways, uh, couldn't come on tonight. You um, yelling at Gobbin. His, and if he his, was his here team right lost. now, if he was here right now, he would totally be fucking like screaming at us. And losing his voice um, about how we're just like misrepresenting what it was he said at the time. He didn't mean it was too hard to catch this shit. And like, it wasn't the mechanics. It was just like a bad day with like no coffee. Um, however, the next section in the balance section is Loki's. Fuck Loki's. Whatever. Loki's are Loki's. If like CCP Rise wants to balance these things, he can. If not, can we please just move on? The next one is Ferox's. Same fucking thing. Except for Tech One ships should not have two of the same bonuses. Tech Two should, because that's cool with an eagle. Right. And I agree too. I mean, it's like uh, the double up. Yeah, Tech Two. Keep it there. Double up, double up. What? Just in case somebody wanted to fucking but clip that or to, whatever. To but... kind of go down that vein, though, there's always going to be the ship that is used by the biggest coalition in the game, and everybody's going to want it nerfed no matter what it is. However, I I am going to skip past the Crow, which we already talked about. The Navy attack cruisers and battleships, I, we're going to skip past that, because sometimes, like, you know, like, Navy shit what just What the heck, to... Dirk? Why? Go ahead. Go ahead. You got a PV thing to, All right, P, so PVE battle thing cruisers, to say about Navy that? Navy Battle Cruisers won Alliance Tournament 15. However, on Tranquility, we really don't see them as much. We see the Ferox at best. Nothing really else. Like, we don't see Drake fleets as much as people love them. Um, we'll see T2 battle cruiser fleets, but not really Navy battle cruiser or normal battle cruiser. Well, no, Yvonne, I, I, I do not, I do not get my pose on during the day. I just totally get drunk and, like, see where it goes. When will the Drake be great again? Oh, my I God. I, I'm gonna do you remember honest. the Permadrake, Dirk? Do you remember how I want, awful I and great they were at the same alive. time? I want to be Eve alive. When the Drakes come back, like, 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 I, like I, I have a special Dirk, love for Hakua's perma Drake. It's like Dirk, it's not that effective. But when the fucking I can... <laughs> microwave drive Drake comes back, yeah, it's like I, it's not very effective. But you know what? I can have my hardener zone and MWD and never run I'm just out of cap. Saying, the perma Drake Dirk, come back and just then, misses and then all the day. Pew, pew, pew. I'll die on a show. Dirk, I mean, so... I'm forgetting that we have that, our but like whatever. We have our new OP ship, the Vindicator Navy issue. There's the no Vindicator, Vindicator Navy, Navy issue. issue. There's is... no such thing. Shh, shh, Dirk. The other day you tweeted about how you're a Quint Eve, but seriously, when you just no, join Black was, Legion and have fun. That was 3 a.m. crazy fucking. Dirk, like, come on, just join that Black was Legion. That blackout high school. Dirk. Dirk, if you apply Me to Harry. Black Legion right now, I'll accept your your app. Me, Rain will give you yeah, a Vindicator Navy base. issue if you join Black Legion. Hold, hold on, Dirk. Tell yeah, him. Come on, Dirk. Just join Black Dirk, Legion. Dirk, tell him I I uh, referenced you, so I get the. What do yeah, we get, yeah, Rain? What do we get if I mean, we bring honestly, people in? I mean, honestly, I'm, I'm really wondering get... why TNT brought him back. Well, I, I get something. left for fucking I bring people... what? Yeah, I know. What? I, I, don't, I, don't I don't think fun. girls get anything, but guys... I didn't but, leave but for guys... PL from TNT. <laughs> I left for CO2 from TOT, so shut the fuck up. Oh, okay. Anyways, Wait a minute. You at least be able to read my you fucking history. CO2? Okay. <laughs> However, I do, I do want to move on to the next section here, which is Call the Enforcer. Call Dirk McGurk joins Black Legion. Yeah, see, and that's why I won't do it, because I respect my own background. I would have joined yeah, that Black Legion yeah. oh, back in yeah, 2012, Drayden. Oh, oh, yeah, that's all you're doing. Why don't you fucking okay. join some fun, okay? Yeah. Hey, the Enforcer. Hey, the Enforcer. Fun, okay? uh, I, I, don't, I don't know if you I don't see you fighting for a while. I see Black, Black Legion while. fighting. Order. I last I checked, we were dunking on Nyx's, losing Titans. But all I see is goons fucking ratting. So how about you shut the fuck we're, up and let the PvPers talk? Nah, yeah, see, I know. See, we, like... we have this thing called PvPers and PvEers. See? Oh, okay. Right, right, I, right, I, right, I don't hear you yeah. PvPing. We're not getting into fucking culture war here. We're just not. We're just not. Like... We're going to have our own justice, and that's how it's going to fucking work. Okay. But the Enforcer, on the other hand, the Enforcer, okay, the Enforcer, 
the judge feels it lacks a niche. Okay? You know what the fucking niche is, judge? Motherfuckers got this for going to E-Vegas. Motherfuckers get this for playing a side game. It is a niche ship. It is a collector's item. It's not the pacifier that 7 million accounts with 40 players got for going to fucking FanFest, a.k.a. Pacifier Gate, okay? Or it's not the fucking Marshall that people got for going to both FanFest that year and Vegas that year. This is just a niche collector's item fucking shit. It actually doesn't need to do anything. It just needs to be what it is because it is in low kind of low kind of orbit of like what people have. Why does this ship need to do something special? Before anybody answers that question, I gotta tell you, I gotta say goodnight because uh, I'm getting I'm getting the hook. Your so, wife is a beautiful right, lady. We wish she was coming to Vegas. Yep. Later, Brit. I wish you was nice too. Thank you, guys. Dude, dude, just so, mess up, just, so just so you don't mess up, just so you don't mess up the right? Zoom cool. thing. Just so you don't mess up the Zoom thing. Uh, just leave the camera on and like, I don't know, go to bed or whatever. Uh, yeah. Also, um, tell her thank you for letting us rent your TV with the in it um, logo, and so she she can actually watch some TV now. I mean, like, she's going back to bed. So, oh man, God, she like missed that. out. All right. She's well, a good lady for letting you like yeah. do this whole thing. It's like, yeah. You know, go. God bless. Yeah. Um, God bless you, We're actually, uh, we're actually over time. Do we want to keep over going time. with the this thing, or do we want to shift it? What do we want to do? No, fucking just keep going because, like, we're actually dealing with stuff here. We're not talking about like whether or not Brisk wears pants in these situations. I mean, well, probably not. I mean, like, could that come in? It might come in. Okay. However, we'll, we have lost we'll put our DSM them. representative. Uh, and here, here's the thing, just to let people know. I, I, I looked out there for CSM representatives. Number one, we can no, we, we can never get anybody from the Imperium on this show. Uh, so I'm always looking for people out there from other places and things like that. A bunch of them are out there right now in uh, Eve, Eve East Germany or uh, was it? G Fleet. G Fleet. G -Fleet. G -Fleet. So make sure you're following the CCP channel. G Fleet, G -Fleet is going on all weekend. So if you want to tune in, I'm pretty sure CCP might be doing some stuff there. So I don't know if we'll get like special announcements do, or do not. Do we want? But that's uh, a good chance. Oh shit! I gotta move the cams around. Uh, do we want Eve Onion? We could bring Eve Onion on. What the man? I don't know. Like he's just saying he could. Put I mean, I mean, last week he was just saying we could put him on. <laughs> did he come on last week? I love Eve Onion. You know what we should look for? We should look for people who don't ask to come on. Oh. We should like reach out as <laughs> as opposed to like accepting. What about uh? Oh, Commander A's is in uh, CSM. But anyways, I'll go find Gevlin. I'll be right back. Seriously, the Gevlin Goblin? Like hell yeah! You're gonna go out there and find? I'll go get... find him. Uh, no, you give me anything. time. But seriously, the Enforcer thing does it actually need to be a ship that means anything other than what it like came into the game for? Kind of a thing. I, I'm with you, Dirk. It could just be a big shuttle, and it would be kind of cool. But it's not. It's just a ship that is oh. like yeah, you know, whatever. But like. There are so few of them out there. In the grand scheme of you can't go make one of these motherfucking ships all the time. What do you expect out of it? I've got like, I don't know how many apotheoses is from back in the fucking day when apotheosi, like, you know, were like actually given out for the few characters we all had back then. Why should the other things like be a thing? Why should the enforcer, you know, it's like, Nobody says, oh, the pacifier should be better because you know why the pacifier, like, if anybody even asked why the pacifier should be better, because people would be like, wait a minute, hold on. All those ghost trainers back in the fucking day got that shit. I agree with that. It's like, please, it's like, just leave that shit alone. The mobile sino inhibitor, moving on a section. That's where I thought the strongest language was in the, uh... The strongest what? The strongest language, sorry. Um, I believe that was the quote, Sort Dragon. This would be the worst thing to ever happen to the game, and blah, blah, blah. Wow, they put that in there when he was in the meeting? No, that's actually not there, though. That's actually... Where, where do you say that at, then? This is the mobile Sino inhibitor. This is not in this section called Structures. Oh, the mobile one? Oh, uh, mm, did they just say... Oh, they said to shorten the time, then. Yeah, I'm the This just basically said, you know what? The mobile Sino inhibitor is like, you know... 
Well, and they were, I, I believe they said they originally launched it cautiously, very cautiously. Because this could actually, like, you know, be something that if, you know, if they put a whole bunch of fucking high level stats on it and shit like that. But Suetonia feels it is very underwhelming in many ways, with the deploy time and the hit point layout makes remote repping it impossible. Fozzie says. I think says, that's the point. Yeah. Fozzie says that the hit point layout discouraging remote repping. Uh, the inhibitors is intentional, but doesn't rule out the possibility of buffing it in general, as they were originally launched very cautiously. Fozzie asks about reducing the cycle to one minute, and uh, that has some discussions. I'm like, is it... Oh, shit. Is it something that is that is not used enough because of the way it is now, or like... In the places that it is trying to be used, I, you know, you know, I don't know, like it doesn't match up. It's set. When was the last time that you were like, "Fuck, we can't jump in"? Somebody laid out a fucking mobile sino inhibitor. I just know. I mean, um, it, when, oh, god. I was gonna say when we use them, it's like we launch one and then all of the logi have to have like two cycles on it at all times, regardless if it's being attacked or not, just to hopefully hold it. And then it doesn't cut Sinos that are already out, but then usually we use it when fighting Rourke. So it's always like, okay, so we put it on this one Rourke, but that Rourke's 200 kilometers away, and it's still cycling, so everyone's just lighting Sinos because they can see it. And now they're trying to shoot it with light drones, and okay, now everything's dying. And it just becomes kind of like a just obnoxious, like almost not worth it at sometimes. Right, I mean... Honestly, from the other side of that, you know, I know Rain's out there actually, you know, doing the PvP, and we're just sitting away, crabbing away in Delve. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's in a decent place. I mean, if we have people that are out there ratting, they're not in data comms, they're not doing what they're supposed to do, I mean, it's it's it, it will help you to uh, take one of those guys down. But if people are doing what they're supposed to do, I mean, I think that's kind of the counterplay to the, to the mobile center inhibitor is just being where you're supposed to be, communicating. Uh, present that's you know i think it's in a good place but who knows yeah there really is a lot of people that die to that yeah. like Aze is here hey hey Aze. hey guys oh my god Aze, do you want them to like put out the statistics about like why war decks are bad you know i i think i posted to reddit about that um and it might have gotten a little out of hand uh <laughs> But yes, yes, it would be great if they came out and just. Can I ask you a this, really this way the serious community fucking question? Can because... target the right individuals and burn them at the stake. In the no, right no, no, no. Hold on, because we shouldn't want to burn people at the stake without fucking data. However, on the other hand, let me ask you a question because I saw the, I saw you posted that today, and because I am an upstanding individual who doesn't have a fucking Reddit account as opposed to a fucking poser part of the rabble. All right, let me ask you this. Would you want them to put the statistics out there without some sort of either resolution or explanation or anything else? Do you just want them to put the data out there and let the rabble go crazy over it? It would be nice if they had an idea, because, uh, I mean, it's not like some of us have been running for CSM for five years in hopes of them catching a, a hint at making a change to the mechanic in some way. But if the data is as bad as everybody's making it out to sound, then the accompanying change should be, hey, we're going to remove this for six months while we figure something out. We're actually right now, because we no longer have anybody uh, from the CSM on here that can help us out with some of the nuances to all of these questions that we have. We're going to cut this here in terms of the actual coverage of the minutes. Upwell structures were something I was hoping to get to, but like, you know, we burned time with some other things like that. So now we're just going into retardo land. So as we're in retardo land. <laughs> do, well, do we want to cut the main show or keep going? Yeah, to... fuck it. Yeah? If, you can I talk tell about you, why if I tell you to go longer, but tomorrow wake up and go, dude, why'd you do that to I, me, You bro? do that all the time. You're like, no, let's why keep going. And, then, and like, that's night. why I'm asking because like, this is the point I'm telling you, this is the point where you what might think I'm, like, let's just keep I'm going. Just and tomorrow, right now, this right now, this moment, mark this moment in your mind. Can we talk this about the, why Black Legion but, lost well, so many well, Hold on, I'm saying this is the moment when tomorrow you will say, why didn't you cut it here? 
I was not opining on that because I'm only allowed to opine on it here. <laughs> we didn't. Use... I also wasn't invited on talking. And people, also, so Dirk, no, you people. weren't. But there were people Dirk, on Dirk. there who were generally associated with that whole thing that sat there. And if you basically, want one side of the what story that's was... fabricated to make them look good, that's fine. By no, me. no. Also, what they, said, what they said was we were out there doing a thing, and Black Legion deserved it, so ass got taken. Also, Dirk, isn't this supposed to be popsicle? Popsicolo land or something? Like, I mean, Whatever. we can't. We, you know, no. what, you know what, yeah. what I learned this week is even if I say retard, I can totally get on the Supreme Court. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> true. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm just saying, like, this is the point where you'd want me to cut it, so we should we should cut it. Or we can, you know, we can keep going. I don't should care. we? Fuck should it. we not? I mean, like, it would make it yeah, easier for me. Thing about like, like when we beer. say things, I know that it, it would make it easier for me because when I have to edit it and, and like do the podcast thing, I have to find. If we go late, I have to find the point where but it I feel goes like from still like on topic in a way. Like, we can we just go to Drayden's channel so well, Drayden can get some subs because it's September still. It's going no, for October I don't, I don't 18th. Need the subs. So Drayden should get some subs so everyone get that cute little emo of his face with the drunken bottle. <laughs> well, I mean, this is kind of really one of those weird moments no. where it's like we're still there, but like well, you that, know it could break at any time. That's not what this is about, Rain. If, if that's what you're getting at, but. Train, I'm trying to support you. Oh, oh, well, thank you. I mean, like, I, I thought you were saying that you're, like, but no, what I'm saying is that when but, I, like, we don't tell people when I have to go make the Train, so, like, you gotta get some SRP for that Titan. When I have, yeah, Shh. wait, oh, yeah, yeah, that thing. But, Dude, like, you're I'm just not saying, like, getting a fucking Titan. Well, hold on, I'm just saying, he like, when I have to, to cut it, when I have to cut it, like, oh I have to God, find. Don't I'm, do that under ELO, dude. That is just going to be like a coffin for you. I'm just saying, I have to find that point where it goes from, like, normal to dum dum zone. And I, I have know. to find and that like middle right part. And, and like, that, and it, I'm it's. Wondering, but wait, what? It's I'm a lot tough of to, alcohol. It's tough. <laughs> you're a lot of alcohol. I'm so sad. It's, it's tough to find that like smart and dumb dumb break and then it always ends up being a cliffhanger and then i get people asking me like why did it we cut off all of a sudden in the podcast it, point break it's <laughs> great <laughs> all right so let's let's just let's just do a shot point break is let's the point break, point break, point break, point break there yet? let's go to drayden channel and we can okay. like shit pose who's gonna be johnny utah i'll, I'll be your huckleberry <laughs> okay <laughs> Okay, All we'll right. just cut it. it it's... So McLeod just gave us the fucking, like, end sign. He's like, he's like later, bitches. He said Guess later. Yeah, later, later, bitches. <laughs> All right, later, bitches. Later, bitches. We'll, we'll go to we dark. will be continuing over on the fucking alternative channel. <laughs> yeah, right. we'll, we'll, yeah, okay. Alt. Hey, hashtag. We're going, we're going to the dive bar. I-N-N. Right now. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're, we're leaving the, the swab bar. Oh, the Have bar. they got that yet? Have they got the alt I-N-N channel yet? I don't know. I'll, get I'll, I'll, I'll like link if it. people out there in management are listening, well, get you know the alt INN channel. Well, they got like an INN Oh, hey, man, look, at, the look at McLeod. Channel. I don't give a shit. Look at McLeod. He's got a command that like brings up my shit. All right, there, there's the channel. McLeod just did no, it. No, right. we don't well, just fucking hand that Drayden shit out there. TV. That's how yeah. we end up with people giving me deep conversations late at night. That's not what I'm looking for. <laughs> all right, Drayden, well, end the show. All right, later, bitches. We're going over to the other side.